We are Squawking Dead, a podcast polarizing episodes of the Walking Dead universe, and it's goddamn morning. <laughs> this is like the only time we can re- we can record. It's 10, a- 10 a.m. Eastern time on a Sunday morning. We all hate each other, or well, we all hate me, including me. <laughs> But we're here to record part four of episode 100, covering our coverage of (laughs) Walking Dead season five, our best clips, our best moments, according to a bunch of us who decided that these are our best moments, including my brother, who's a cool (laughs) dude who only did eight clips. Anyway, so let's keep going. (laughs) He's still, though. Yeah, I still still got him him a shirt. We're going to screen share a little bit of uh, our, our favorite clips from Fear the Walking Dead season five. If you want to get these clips right out the gate... All of them, three hours and forty six minutes of of uh, our best of clips, including stuff that we we'd previously released, but are on YouTube. There's a unlisted playlist that we actually have in some of our posts, our latest posts on ko-fi.com/squawkingdead. It's really literally just three dollars, three dollars, and you can access it for thirty days. Or if you subscribe to a coffee a month, you can get the party rolling. But you know, once you have the once you have the link to the playlist, just add it to your YouTube account. And you have it forever. Either way, try to just set up a coffee.com account. That's ko-fi.com. And then follow us at ko-fi.com slash squawking dead. You know, you're in the loop. You know what's going on. As soon as something drops, you know it's there. And if you want to support us, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. Because there's still some other posts that are free. Let's start with the first clip and see where we land. Anytime that we see, pe- that we can see like a pet during the apocalypse, I feel like everybody loves it. Like, I mean, it's like Daryl and dog, you know? Yeah. People are like, yeah. no, 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 something can't happen to dog. Right. Right. Nope. That would be yep. the only reason I don't want to see animals on the show is because there's a, then there's a potential. Right. Yeah, yes. there's a potential for them to get eaten. I would rather see a person get oh, eaten okay. yes. than an animal. Absolutely. And that drives me up. Oh, that was heartbreaking. It makes me crazy. Shiva's death was heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all, see, like, here's the thing. My thing is all deaths are heartbreaking. But yeah. I have a, mm. I'm partial to people. I'm, You're partial to people? I'm partial oh. to people. <laughs> I'm on team people, people. <laughs> people. I, I just have a weak, like, to me, it's like, I, I, I'm triggered by the defenseless. And to me, like, animals and, like, kids are the defenseless. Like, Fair enough. Yeah. So that is what triggers me. Like, the same reason why, and, like, when, when the whispers were, like, at the gates and, they, and that female whisper put the baby like on the ground. Yeah. I was like, okay, this is this is going to please do not go there. <laughs> and I was like, please let's not go there. You know, like and I, in my logical mind I knew like it probably they're, they're gonna the baby will be safe. But in my mind I was like, but also there was a little part of me that was like, oh please dear God, let's not go there. <laughs> you know? Cause that's the thing. It's like when it comes to that kind of stuff or like, you know, animals what's the name of the horse? Was it buttons? The horse? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, that was so <laughs> cool. Yep. Yeah. 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 That kind of stuff. I'm like, oh, it just hurts my heart. But you know, like a human being, it's like, well, you know. You know, yeah, we got so many <laughs> of those. Yeah. It's like, no, but I mean, it's like, no, tell me more because. You I'm bullshit. I'm on team people, people. <laughs> no, it's always a tragedy. No, I know. I, I see what you mean. I, I find that like that attitude, and this is this is how this is so why it's so strange to kind of. I find this conversation fascinating, mm-hmm. but like the, I think part of it is like this weird holdover because we we do see that humans like are capable mm-hmm. of like the most cruelty or whatever. Right. And and on the other hand, there is something to be said about the impression that like let's say the concept of original sin kind of has on people's minds. Like okay, humans were born into this world. The further along we are in, the less we give a shit. There's like mm-hmm. the Louis C.K. bit. Of, like, like, you know, like, oh, when you turn 30, he's like, oh, he's 30. Oh, it's cool. When you turn 40, everybody just, oh, 40, he has a new 30. When you turn 50, mm-hmm. nobody gives a shit. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> the older you, like, until you turn, like, 90 and then you're like, wow, you made it this far? Wow, I thought you were dead. <laughs> you know, like that, you know what I mean? Like, they should check on you. You <laughs> deserve a party. <laughs> wow, good, 100. Whoa. <laughs> Who wants to break the Guinness Book of World Records? <laughs> you do. <laughs> so, but then, like, yeah, it's, it's in the Walking Dead universe. It's like it's people they cause the most problems. They are the Walking Dead. Blah blah blah. So I can see why people would be more sympathetic to animals. They didn't do nothing wrong. It's not it's their pe- fault. It's people that made yeah. the virus. <laughs> yeah, animals are just surviving. They're just surviving right. as they typically do. The chaos that's going on in the human world, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah. giving you the points on that one. I'm still on Team PayPal. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm in this world. If I maybe it was in maybe if I was in no, if I was in the zombie apocalypse, I'd still I'd probably be even more team people. I'd be like, okay, look, hey, I'm gonna eat you. Exactly. <laughs> You're now my food. Oh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> it's skid mark skid I mean, if it came down to that. I'd have to. It's eat. different. But it's yeah. just the name skid mark. I'm eating skid mark. I wouldn't call it that. I'd call yeah. it dinner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, would, I would actually give it a name. I would honor dinner. it. See, that's the thing. Like, I would honor it with its name. Everybody enjoy skid mark. Thank you. What was yeah. that goat's name? Tabitha. Oh. Tabitha. Yeah. Oh, poor Tabitha. Oh, ta- yes, yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, man, but there is an honor and like there are people that believe like you know when they have to like kill their prey for survival purposes for eating that they're honor, honoring yeah. yeah they're they're properly honoring like you know their prey because it's that this prey is providing them nourishment that they need i mean at least that's what they always say yeah, anyway. yeah. Right. by the way i wasn't even gonna bring this up but i'm glad i did now everybody skid marks for dinner <laughs> enjoy <laughs> you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna get much meat from a cat <laughs> but yeah but you know what uh was it like uh, beggars can't be choosers it's yeah. it's like it's like yeah it's either skid mark or you know some, somebody's gonna have to shave off a finger like a pinky <laughs> <laughs> i am not against eating pets okay well I not as long as they're not <laughs> your as long as they're not your pets right like they're just <laughs> say <laughs> say animals pets. it's extra creepy when you say pets <laughs> no no that's why that's why i said it that's why i said it <laughs> i'm not opposed to surviving for any means necessary right. how about that how about that? I, i'm yeah. gonna say this, this is a very controversial thing right now I, i'm not against the yulin dog festival <laughs> i'm not at all the what the, they're so the chinese have this like yulin dog festival where they they go out in the street because they they're a little overrun um with uh with dogs part of me is kind of like i get why people are upset with this this sort of thing but like it's the same thing with deer hunting right i was just gonna say it sounds like us and deer we're all one with deer so we have deer season they have dog season exactly and and you get you get overrun with deer they they get into like the farm population and it's like oh this is a huge problem there's like toxic poop they're eating things they actually shouldn't be eating actually Mm -hmm. too like in their diet um which causes them to go into the population which is which isn't great for them isn't great for us um and so yeah you have to kind of you know eliminate so you know a, a sizable portion portion of their population just to keep them safe uh, in, in a sort of weird way but look we all we all watch a zombie apocalypse show and it's kind of like well like why is it so bad you know if they need to <laughs> decrease the population i mean geez it's like the walkers <laughs> anyway so i am 100 percent against it i would rather eat my human neighbors than their dog I, I, I would i would like eat them and give the dogs you know like watch oh the leftovers <laughs> yeah the leftovers and i would take care of their dogs nisa nisa and i are diametrically opposed here yeah <laughs> like, also, if there were if there were people eat, around i'd eat them before my animals sure rachel was talking about eating the neighbors and i was like our neighbors have kids and that seems to be you guys saying yeah it seems to be our thing to eat kids <laughs> right <laughs> <The apocalypse. laughs> i mean my, my neighbors would. don't have kids so yeah, children that, that, would be more tender that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be coming up soon yeah less stringy like adults Ooh, gross Ugh. i'd like to think that in the zombie apocalypse i would actually be not in your opinion there would have animals like if you came across a wild animal say would you kill it and eat it or oh, or survive. do you only okay okay so you would eat an animal just not one that you have an emotional attachment to uh I, yeah i wouldn't eat like dogs that i know <laughs> there's gonna come a time in which i'm i'm there's gonna no more food i'm now. gonna eat my neighbor's pets i'm not gonna eat mine never right oh, i okay. think i would i think i would starve before i i eat my dog but army cat as we discover in the zombie apocalypse like migratory patterns change uh dogs start going feral as they go hungry and it's kind of like at what point do you decide you know like for my own safety because they're not going to start listening to me anymore like there's there's is there going to be a point in your mind it sounds like there is like where you decide look it's now it's starting to look like it's it's us or them so i've given this a lot of thought and if i come to the point in which i'm thinking <laughs> about eating my dogs i am going to release them so they can try to survive as feral dogs with other dogs right so this so, way you can feel better about eating them later no I, I can eat other dogs but not my dogs like oh hey you're free now bobby yay uh don't don't eat me i'm gonna eat your friend though <laughs> Right, bring you your. Know, I, I would just try to give them a chance to survive, and I would go on my own, like here's away. Where the, here's where the compromise comes in, right? You should train your dog to bring to groom other dogs to bring <laughs> to bring them back. Oh my! I God. had that same thought. It's like it's like dominoes for dogs. It's like I it, had that same thought. I'm like, go send the dog out and have him bring a friend back, and then eat the friend. <laughs> God, that sounds so sketchy. That's we like we cannot. We cannot eat my dog's friend. Yeah. Yeah, and and Bobby dog. would eat him too. 
too. I mean, right. Bobby's hungry, so he needs to eat. He'll, he'll be like, yeah, and also Gibbs. I mean, he's a yeah. big dog, and other dogs love him. He's a beautiful and nice German Shepherd who other dogs love. So he yeah. he could definitely be the one to you know bring other dogs home. So <laughs> that's, he could eat. that's a friend, you know. It's a friend till the end. It's by you too, because I kind of want to see what you what, what what you think too. The the swan song theory. Is oh, this, that, I love um, this. The the sole survivor of Fear the Walking Dead is Althea, and mm-hmm. everybody else dies. Aww. With the option of Morgan and Dwight coming aboard, since they were on The Walking Dead, mm-hmm. you know, maybe let's. You never know. Um, well, it's not theoretical right now, so it gives closure to Fear the Walking Dead, but it gives all the characters involved like a like a bit more meaning and more drive to kind of come back or be a part of these other projects, like the movie or the uh, or or The Walking Dead, even. Like, you know, that gives them kind of purpose. Um, so, yeah, and the po- the poetry behind her doing that is so that it gives fear like a, a like a, like an end chapter, like a, like full closure. Like, yes, this is how the Clarks lived and Starand, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also gives Althea purpose because she, she was, as opposed to not being a part of the story and filming it from afar, she, this is the one she stepped into and she helped close it, you know, and, and I, I'm not thinking tragic death. I'm thinking like meaningful death or something like that. That. they helped they they died helping someone like a great a good type death. yeah yeah and and so we don't talk about how they die we talk about how they lived and that's fear the walking dead as a whole and so althea having stepped into the story now will never like capture another story again she'll be a part of the world like morgan yeah in a way it's a terrible thought and there's there's holes poked into all of this like nobody wants this to happen if i had to think of like a an interesting way for for the story to go like we still don't know everything about althea by the end of the season we know more things about her than we would have but like we thought we'd get more in season four and we didn't and it's only season five and we got a little bit more uh into her character why she why she keeps the tapes he's like this M. Well Tarly of um the walking dead writing down the histories I mean, of course in her case she's not writing but taking down the histories of the people um a record keeper um so that people in the future can look back and see what was happening uh, but instead of like a song of ice and fire I'll call it a song of gas and water or something oh yeah wow or of oil and water it doesn't mix <laughs> the reason why i say this and the reason why i thought this up because it's and it's a terrible thought that like okay everybody else dies albeit for a greater purpose but these are people who are really the walking dead itself or the universe itself is the idea is like finding your idealized self and actualizing it in this zombie apocalypse in a world where it has to look beyond survival right but althea is still her herself you know granted she's living in the world but she's still her old self she's still reporting all these things but at some point she has to step in and be something more i wonder you know what i mean she's the only one she's the only holdout right now and like going off the conversation of the commonwealth and all that stuff like how oh they assign you what you were before so like what's the point you know if you don't have the freedom to to be the thing that you were meant to be you know or something more i wonder about her because it's not often that you see people being the same person if she was i mean we're assuming this is who she was before the apocalypse as well that's a good point maybe she's <laughs> a liar maybe she assumed someone else's identity who was a journalist that she knew like Wes. maybe her name's not even althea <laughs> <laughs> Like when when Wes is when Wes is Derek, exactly. <laughs> I was gonna say that in the case of the Commonwealth, you know, in a comic, it's what you were before. You're gonna be now. Like, what if you you're good at you know different things and you just lie? Like, you know, I uh, I, I used to be a psychologist. How are they gonna verify that? Imagine the like somebody was like, I was I was in marketing before it all went down. Like, what do you do <laughs> in the apocalypse? <laughs> Exactly, but these communities. I'm just gonna lie and say, you know, I was a psychologist. Officer of propaganda? In marketing, you um, can make movies to show people what you're doing, a la Al. Market your community. I can imagine, like, a person in marketing would just be sitting on their ass most of the time. Like, I feel like uh, someone in marketing <laughs> would have Aaron's job. They would go out and recruit. But it depends on the community. Well, I guess the Commonwealth, you could do that. Like, CRM, you wouldn't do that because the whole point is that you don't recruit. Right. You know I mean? But in a community, an actual community... You'd want people. Someone who's good at marketing would be a good people person. I guess you'd have to be good at fighting, too. (laughs) Collect people. Yeah. Well, that's something everyone would learn in the apocalypse. I mean, come on. Ideally. Nobody, (laughs) nobody's getting away with not being able to defend themselves. And if they, if they don't, then they're dead. (laughs) I mean, especially after a few years, if you're alive, then you know how to defend yourself. Or you're Eugene. (laughs) 
by yeah, the way, hard here, Eugene. <laughs> right? But that's that's what I'm saying. There's there's bound to be many of those. But you're just I, really exceptionally good at lying. So I started, there I you start, go. I started thinking about like one specific thing though, as as we were talking about the marketing. I was like, what if you're a sex worker? Is that what's going to happen? And, and... <laughs> Yeah. Do you know what well, I mean? Well, I don't think that's what you would tell everyone you did beforehand. <laughs> I was I was a what is what do they call them escort an yeah escort. A concubine escort whatever I was a concubine, concubine. I was a concubine <laughs> for the emperor or some stupid thing yeah like, so what's my job uh, I'll get back to you again recru- <laughs> recruitment <laughs> yes you are good with people <laughs> they're people people. <laughs> <laughs> I've got layers. So now we're getting to the point where, like, we started making clips this season for some reason. Like, we hadn't done it until season five, or like our what was it, our third year, second year. But yeah, this is our first one actually. Oh well, technically it was the episode twenty four where we started making clips for the mid season, the SDCC content. But yeah, this is like the an actual episode. By the way, how deflating was it um, when they get to this big wall of uh, bowel um, barricade? Arcades, right? That's what you call it. Yeah. Yeah. When they get to this bit, and they're they're like doing the Avengers assemble pose. Like I think there was literally music. It was like, awesome. Da, 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 da. And then all I of a sudden, teaser about it too. Like wait, wait, hold on, I, I got a call. <laughs> oh, hello? Yeah. Oh, kid. Oh, guys, we gotta go. This is we gotta we gotta, <laughs> gotta, we gotta hit the dusty trail, right, John Dory? <laughs> Drivers, gotta, assemble. We, we, yeah, no. Oh, wait. No, we're not. We're not. We're not assembling. Oh. Okay. Okay. Bye. So, bye. Uh, all right. We'll put a pin in it. <laughs> we'll, we'll be back. We'll be Speaking back of deflation, putting a pin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get that later <laughs> thanks can we do lunch um yeah I, I don't know i just thought that was just hilarious actually and then and then they drop a bombshell which makes it even like so they have this the little things that that are kind of just funny they were trying to find the kids or something and then like or, or i can't remember exactly what it was but then they decide to go north where there's that huge blockade of of walkers or whatever mm-hmm. and they're about to go through it like through this big thing and then they're like oh wait oh wait we, we gotta go I guess we gotta go. I guess where well, I guess we're going. We're going. We're not doing this. Okay. This thing that we shouldn't do, or apparently, I don't know. Like Vatos in, uh, in the first season when it's all tense between the Vatos and uh, our group, and all of a sudden Granny comes walking out. It's so like, oh, okay, everything's fine now. We're all done. <laughs> oh, oh, everything's great. Awesome. All right. All right. There's no tension. Okay. Cool. Oh, which is by the way, it's funny that you mentioned that. Like some people are saying, like, oh, this should be like another one of those tales of the of the Walking Dead. Like, okay, whatever happened to those guys? That would be fun. I really liked that group. Honestly, I, I thought, I, I don't want to spend too much time because it, it has nothing to do with this episode, but I just thought that was really I, awesome and an amazing display of judging someone before you know them, right? I mean, look at these guys. They look scary. They act scary. And then, you know, if, eventually we find out they're in the exact same position we are, yeah. just surviving. Just a reflection. <laughs> yeah. The way they showed it was perfect when Abuela comes in and like, Abuela, yeah. what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. This is so nice. You were like, wait. She's You're like, Clarence, who are your friends? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was brilliant. Before I bring this up, this is one of the things that's on John and June's movie list is Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. If you remember Mm -hmm. Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark, there's a very epic kill in that movie that involves a big ass boxing Nazi in in Indiana Jones. Come on, Indiana. And there's a plane that's where the pilot got shot, (laughs) and he's like resting on the control panel, and this the plane's kind of spinning around in the on in the runway, you know, like this, and like this, they're boxing and all of a sudden Indy gets him in a move and punches him in the face and then he falls into the propeller blades. Oh, that propeller kill. <laughs> yeah. If that so, doesn't win the combo kill on Instagram, I don't know what will. Yeah, I, I think Victor gets this one too, by it, the it way. Does. He it should, does. definitely. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, that's I, that's that's why I'm looking out for these parallels because um, cause Andrew Chambliss is basically saying the movies have a very interesting tie-in. The, the movies on John and June's movie list have a very interesting tie-in to what happens mm-hmm. in the season. And so given that, the propeller kill and Indiana Jones makes me. This is a perfect segue. Before we continue with that, I forgot to point the mic to you, Sharon, D, about uh, Fear the Walking Dead season four, and you wanted to mention something about it happened one night. Somewhere in time. Oh, somewhere, somewhere in time, time right? Doors with. It's about a man who goes back in time to find the woman that he loves. Um, he's a playwright, and a woman comes to an old woman comes to him after one of the plays, and is like, "Come back to me." And so he does some research and figures out she was actress in the turn of the century. So he uses some. He time travels. He 
lay, he dresses in period clothes and has all period stuff, and he lays in the bed and listens to a tape about time traveling, and he time travels back and finds her. And um, they fall in love and everything, and then he's sitting with her after <clears throat> after they, you know, do it. And um, <laughs> he pulls a coin out of his pocket, and it's, <laughs> it's a modern-day coin, and all of a sudden he just zips back, and he's back in present day, and he leaves her behind, and that's how it's come at the But I was just saying that uh, there's a lot of uh, parallels in there with John and June and him trying to go back and forth to find her. Oh, yeah. That whole movie was um, filmed on Mackinac Island here in Michigan. Oh. It took place at the Grand Hotel. It's a great movie. I've stood, I've stood in the place where he, there's a plaque on the tree. There's a, there's a scene where he's standing next to the tree and I think it's right after he gets that back to present day and he's just sad standing by a tree and they've like, yeah, put a plaque on it and everything and they're like, Christopher Reeve stood right here. <laughs> I this is the it. tree. This is yeah. the tree. Oh, it's Christopher Reeve, huh? <laughs> and James Seymour? Anymore. Yeah, I actually fell so much in love with that movie. I always said if I had a daughter, I would name her McKenna. Jane Seymour's um, character's name is Elise McKenna. All right, let's move on. Let's go to my love. It's like a love letter to to Ruben Blades. By the uh, way, it's just his acting on this episode is just so grounded. Mm-hmm. I feel like where everybody else is over the top a little bit. I mean, because acting <laughs> is like a is like taking what we do normally, like even us on the podcast, and just shooting it up ten levels. But like yeah. he he has a way of playing it like so casual but like in a way that that kind of has the right punch he just accentuates just enough to kind of get you know suck you into his world and he did it in kind of a menacing way this week too (laughs) that i hated him but i loved him at the same time yeah yeah like like the way he's kind of I don't know what's what's the right word. This kind word. Of lording <laughs> like, over Charlie a little bit. Luring? Lording like a like a like <laughs> leaning over and then being like, Hey, I'm, oh, okay. I'm Daniel Salazar. You will listen to me. <laughs> like puppet master almost. <laughs> yeah, almost. Yeah. He he assumes he knows because she's so young, he assumes, you know, she hasn't seen or done the things that she has and I think she kinda of puts him in his place. <laughs> first three seasons yet so my only experience with him is from season five and i mean so far i like him and i was i like his relationship with charlie i think it's really sweet but i'm gonna be honest when he separated from skidmart it hurt a whole lot worse his personality when he was separated from skidmart at the end like, he separated from charlie okay. too and it was sad but yeah. separation from skidmart was like, worse uh, in, in in what uh, way uh mostly it hurt me a lot more when they took his cat away than when they took charlie away <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We're going Screw back to Charlie. <laughs> I'm on DP. I wish, <laughs> I wish this whole show would have started with Daniel Salazar and his family. <laughs> and it will. I mean, kind of did. I mean, no. I mean, I mean, from their point of view. Oh. Forget the Clarks. I think Ruben Blades is a, a an amazing leading man. I think I would have liked to see him in a more leading role. But you know, you know what it yeah. is. You know why they started with the Clarks is because they're they're basically two separate families that found each other and joined together with two with all these different personalities though. Like rather than like one a focus like well, a sure race. Travis has a serial killer son nick's got drug problems alicia's just like what <laughs> serial do we do? Killer. Wait, his serial killer son <laughs> no he's just a shitty teen that's the thing like it's serial killer tendencies well get yeah, well kids in the apocalypse right don't they all no, just gonna... he was just chris he was, he was like that before we just saw yeah. that in the apocalypse he would have oh, killed right. somebody before he would have killed somebody without the apocalypse yeah exactly <laughs> I, I have more sympathy for him though. I, I like over the years I've cu- look. I at the time I thought he was such a fucking dick, but then like <laughs> I, I'm looking back at like what people think they need to be in the apocalypse. This is not limited to just Chris, right? That kind of thing. We've seen it in like like that thing where you know Ron Anderson is like now I got to be all hard, right? Like I got to be all mm-hmm. like tough and shit because because oddly enough, like Carl was egging him on, right? He was like saying you got to be something different, man. Like it's not gonna if you go back past these walls, it's different. Different, yeah, you know? and then he became what... kind of, but he took it the wrong way. Yeah, but yeah, he became what he thought he needed to be. Oddly enough, ironically, and then shot freaking Carl in the face. Carl wasn't specific enough about what Ron needed to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> neither was Chris. Ma- neither. Neither was Travis Manawa. <laughs> There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is the funny part that I was mentioning the other night about, uh, when we were covering Walking Dead season nine. Speaking of seeing, by the way, like, what do you think this bitch sees with the helmet on? Okay, because like, I gotta know. I gotta know. Just like two it, little slits. <laughs> is, yeah. Are there, or is it like a HUD or something like that with like night vision and shit? 
because I really want to know. Um, based on everything that we kind of duct tape all over it. <laughs> yeah, that's what oh, it looks yeah. like. I don't well, know. Based on the whole thing with like you know, how we were joking before about like the cure egg and such, they'd probably pull some like Tony Stark shit and just have like all electronic <laughs> grid, like a map of like where to go. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Awesome. Like, or like the Predator. Oh, like where it's. Like, I was gonna all, say Predator. Yes. Right. Infrared. <laughs> <laughs> totally. That would be that would be a, a, a least bit like kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Excuse it me, really guys. Wouldn't really help with walkers though, right? Because they'd be cold. Exactly. Because they're dead. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're dumb. That's true. We're, th- we're just absolutely stupid. <laughs> Points to you. I bow. Sorry, guys. No. It's good to be disappointed. <laughs> oh, I know. You see that little bit of brain activity, though. Like the little bit of brain activity that's going Would on. There be, uh, yeah, well, there, it'd be like, what? I, can you see brain, brain? Can you see brain activity? Like, see? Uh, I'm talking about in, in the infrared. Yeah. Is the bra- it's, it's I mean, not- if the brain gives off any heat, but it's then it not would pick too it up. It'd give off electricity. It'd be Remember like- the in the episode uh, that Jenner mm-hmm. shows the the brain of the walker, you know, how it works. It's very, very little. So, you know, it, it would, you wouldn't pick up much with infrared. Right. And it, it would be like an EKG. And and it's not something you could you could see in real time because what Jenner is doing is he's performing an MRI. Uh, not an MRI. MRI? MRI or CT? MRI. Yeah, it would be an MRI. Yeah. I think it was an MRI, yeah. Yeah, not a CT. CT is for blood uh, for blood vessels. But yeah. So, so does. Could, could you imagine? It's just like this thing. It's an instant <laughs> MRI machine. It just microwaves everybody <laughs> in sight. Just, like, can you imagine like having a uh, microwave on your face? <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck it, it's a dead world. <laughs> they can handle it. A little radiation, right? Right. What about you? If you have your head in a microwave, you're the yeah. one getting the most radiation. No, nah, this, this is a Faraday cage. It's a Faraday cage, right? Ah, uh, <laughs> okay, okay. All right. <laughs> we just figured it out. It's a Faraday cage. We oh, solved the problem. Fucking hell. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and, which goes to the top of the, the clip. Like, what does this bitch see? <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> at my restaurant I used to work at, we had window wings. And from the outside, they were completely um, opaque. You couldn't see through. It was like advertising on the windows. Okay. And from the outside, you couldn't see through at all. But from the inside, it was they were completely transparent. It was like they weren't even there. Oh, so if you were standing oh wow. Up, you couldn't even see the window queen on the window. But if you were on the outside looking in, all you could see was a window so maybe it's some better version of that i wonder how that plays out behind the helmet you know like so is it electrical is it not is it like can you see better right is it like a like a night vision pain or something mm-hmm. or an ele- so you, like um some some cars have that um like it's like it's kind of a new thing like some cars instead of like a rear view mirror in the in the in the center you know that that center one above your head uh mm-hmm. yeah. you can like flip it like you would the, at night when there's a high beam and instead of like that that darker mirror so you don't get blasted with light it right. actually shows an electronic like it shows an electronic like your cell phone an electronic version of what's in back of you cuz your yeah. rear view camera oh yeah so so you and you get like a better picture of what's behind you huh yeah also some come with sensors proximity sensor yeah exactly back of your car. so i wonder if it's like that like a like an led screen you hmm. know where, where you can see like a properly lit version and then where's the fucking camera okay what does this bitch see <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you you telling us like wait guys come on like <laughs> can't see heat from these walkers come on yeah <laughs> lump in my throat yeah the line just gets you and then you i just... screamed a moment later when that happened i gotta say you're the prettiest thing i've I've seen since the end of everything and like i'm like holy shit that is i was that is, i was floored i was shocked yeah. that was magic that was like whoa was like, unexpected Gosh. you should see her after a shower <laughs> 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 And the moment's gone. <laughs> the part of Dave will be played by Rachel today. <laughs> I can't wait to do episode notes because that was, that was perfect. Uh, <laughs> I think we found the top moment of the episode tonight. Oh, going in the clip right there. <laughs> that's the funniest thing since that's the end of it. How much editing you have to do with this episode? <laughs> well, that's the end of this episode. <laughs> End of everything. Right? End of everything. <laughs> we do bar mitzvahs. <laughs> anyway. 
Yeah, there goes my lungs. <laughs> See, the thing is that you plant something in our head. Like, we, remember we were talking about, like, in a grimy world, beauty is everything. Like, <laughs> or, or in a gross world. Yeah. And then, so then, like, you know, we're looking at this drama, and they're, oh, it's, the, there's, oh, you're great, and you're, yeah, I love you, I think, maybe. And then, like, all of a sudden, you kind of bring us back to reality. It's like, well, you know, like, that's great. <laughs> Could be better. <laughs> it could be just a little better. Could be so much better. <laughs> Remember, hygiene is is like minimal, <laughs> like oh. if at all. So yeah, just just okay. Just imagine it happened uh, somewhere in time, <laughs> but just everybody's everybody's gross <laughs> underneath their clothes. It's, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That was the that's what I was thinking the whole time too. That's why I said it. Like during that scene, and they're having this super romantic moment. In my mind, I'm going Bleh, right, <laughs> right with. <laughs> <laughs> without brushing their teeth <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> you're, the pretty, you're the prettiest thing <laughs> I haven't brushed my teeth in six years <laughs> <laughs> like can you imagine the smile there's like, there's like leftover dog food <laughs> right let's be honest at this point I mean people would start losing teeth <laughs> like <laughs> But imagine if, like, the standard of beauty also is it just, like, on that note, like, okay, maybe she is the prettiest thing, right? And, like, because everybody else is, like, by comparison, it's just, like, oh, yeah, way it's gr yeah. grosser. The horrible. Yeah. <laughs> the woman with one tooth is the most beautiful. Like, every everybody's, like, a meth beauty queen, sort of. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I mean, if you don't have dental care, then you're not gonna, your teeth aren't gonna make it, so. <laughs> right. Right. Oily skin. Okay. <laughs> Get that gentle rash on their face. Anyway, let's <laughs> CGI on that hot air balloon. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah! It was <laughs> right up there with the deer. <laughs> like, what the hell? Oh my god. I don't like, want to laugh. It was the deer, the junkyard, the balloon. In order of what? Like, because did, I still the find the deer was, to be the worst. The deer was the worst. Deer takes the cake. Then it goes the junkyard. Right. Wait, so just for reference, does anybody know what we're talking about when we're talking about the deer? Yes. Specifically? Yes. Okay, so the C the CGI idea when Rick and Michonne were at that sort of carnival like festival thing and they're scared. We thought Rick died, but he didn't. Yes. Did Rick die? At oh yeah. Michonne, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th Michonne thought he was. Right, right, and then a second later. But yeah, and then and then you see the deer and it's just it's horribly <laughs> horrible. It's so horribly CGI'd. <laughs> And so, and the junkyard. Okay, she's referring to the the helicopter scene where they it's, it's moving away. But yeah, right. uh, the junkyard in terms. Oh, not where it's parked in the background. We see the helicopter in the back, and we all thought that it was the blooper. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. You thought that yeah. I, you know, I didn't pay attention. But yeah, go ahead. Well, at first, when I first watched it, I thought, oh my god, how stupid are they? They didn't remove, you know, this plane or helicopter. But now I'm thinking it was like, you know, the helicopter. Right. And then it goes to the balloon. Now that we know better, so the balloon is passable, but also because you know what I, I, I don't. I don't want to talk about the balloon just yet, but I do want to say one thing. It, that scene made me think of like it was Ghostbusters two, <laughs> and you start to see the Statue of Liberty coming in from the distance, and you find out that they're the obviously motion like the animated, the animated. Um, like, it's an actress in like a lot of makeup too. Like it's just that coming in from the distance mm -hmm. like this. That's all it made me think of. Like because what they have to do with that stuff is they have to kind of first of all, it's it is a form of green screen right or blue screen even yeah and and the actress comes in from the distance and of course the mismatch between like at the time because of what they're trying to do like the film stock of the people in the street and the film stock of the actress they're like on different speeds and different lighting and whatever but i thought they did a really good job which we'll see here in a second this is something that we did like while i was editing i was like oh my god i can do this really quick i can get the the scene where the where we where we see the hot air balloon in, in the distance <laughs> And I was just thinking to myself, what if I took this and I I put the I put the music to um the Rainbow Connection and this is what I came up with. I'm I'm actually gonna as the music comes on, I'm gonna actually lower it, see if we don't get dinged. Uh oh. Hey, I told you we find a way. Did you find a road? Roads are not a necessary ingredient to this journey. <laughs> can you still hear it though? A little bit, yeah. yeah. Enough. Yeah. Let's let's commentary on it so that we can actually not get dinged. <laughs> Oh my god! Does it match? The expressions up? on their face go so well with the song too. Like <gasps> exactly, and then like, you see. Beer. I can picture them as Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> And Leah, look at the expressions of the people on the ground too. Yeah, <laughs> it's like so hopeful. 
Someday they'll find it. Oh, no <laughs> connection. The dreamers and me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Morgan was capper. I know. I wanted Morgan to like roll his eyes and be like, what the f- <laughs> <laughs> This isn't what I had in mind. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? But all right, I'll go for it. I'll go with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. Imagine Morgan right there. He's, he's just kind of like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> but like, but also he's kind of impressed. Like, kind of like, Rick is never going to believe this. <laughs> like, he's like, <laughs> right? I wouldn't believe it if I wasn't watching it right now. Meanwhile, yeah. R- Rick keeps on getting injured in the same goddamn spot on his body. That little, that little patch right here. Right? <laughs> he's ad- ad- his ad- hand. Always, he always hurt the same hand. Yeah. Like, always trolling the audience. Like, ah, oh, oh, will we take the oh. hand off this year? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about this year? <laughs> yeah, God. exactly. Oh, Winslow slash the RV slash everything. You know what? Let's go on that because imagine Morgan seeing every time Rick get in- gets injured and goes, oh my God, again, dude? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, just as equally unbelievable as-, as a beer bottle balloon in the sky. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, this is this is funny to me, but... Every time I see Kim D- Dickens being asked that question, she goes, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Dickens. Because I'm trying to sound like her a little bit. <laughs> like, come on, that's great playing her, but, you know, like, <laughs> nonchalant, right? <laughs> but the reason why what you said is so funny is, like, imagine she's, like, really f***ed up and mad about it. Right. I would be, like... like just flips. <laughs> it's like, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> totally calm in the public. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, she has she her hands in the back and her back pockets. She's like, ah, just try to prevent from killing y'all. <laughs> yes, Restrain yourself. I show, bitch. <laughs> what? Well, I keep hating to answer this yeah. question. Well, imagine what? she like, she, she, okay, there's a camera behind her. It's like, oh, I don't know. Like, there's a camera in front of her, a camera behind her. It's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and then like, she turns around and she whips around. She's like, but I'm out. Come on. <laughs> It's like it's like just like the, uh, just the most <laughs> raunchy f***ed up thing that she could say. Just gonna fuck them all in the pussy. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> terrible. No, it's every interview she answers the exact same way every single time she's asked this question too, and it's just like, oh my god, about being killed off. Well, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, do you, oh, do you see like do you see her coming back? Did you like playing? You know, oh god. Clark, the, and it's the exact same. Well, I don't know. You know, it's like I like being mad. She was a strong female. Okay. <laughs> I love your impression of Kim Dickens. Same, because it sounds nothing like her. But it's like it's oh, the well. intonation, but it's like not at all the way she sounds. But but like but in the same way every single time, and it's just like oh my god, she's really fucked up about it, isn't she? <laughs> like like she must be. She's got to keep a keep her happy her happy face on. Right, like the professional actor, you know, is you know best face forward. You know, not to denigrate the people that actually paid me and stuff. So. <laughs> Yeah, like, but I also imagine being asked that question. Every, like so many times by fanboys. Yeah, like, oh my god, just can we just move on, please? Right. Meanwhile, the only reason why she's there is, you know, interviewing is because of her role in this franchise, too, probably. I think she's fine. She's done projects since being off fear. I mean, it's not like she's missing out on work. Right, exactly. exactly. Like, I'm still waiting to watch the Briar Patch. Sometimes I don't like these interviews, too. Like, you don't want to ask. A- ask the same question at least in the same way you kind of want to say it differently or i don't know you know what someone should ask her is what what has been your favorite role so far and if she says madison that may gauge how messed up she is about not being that character anymore maybe yeah Yeah. it's a hard question isn't it yeah but but yeah but then you know what a lot of actors do the cop-out answer like the oh all of them are really all of them (laughs) (laughs) how could i possibly pick one they're all different in their own way yeah Yeah, I can re- I can relate to each role I've had. <laughs> uh, uh, <gross>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, unless you're like Robert Downey Jr., he can just be like, yeah, Tony oh. Stark, man. Mm, yeah, Tony Stark. Why not? Yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe I mean, dude. Huh? Oh uh, <laughs> yeah. Now I'm just imagining <laughs> Ma- uh, Madison, Ma- Kim Dickens, and Tony Stark in the same. Yeah, oh, yeah, Madison. Cl- uh, Ma- yeah, I'd be Madison. I'd be sorry. I'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a son. I have a daughter. Great. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, maybe she maybe she thought the character was going to last longer than than what she lasted. Yeah, I have a feeling. Yeah, I mean, of course she did. Yeah, because she was led to yeah. believe that it would be. But yeah. Yeah. Well, when you're the star of a show, you kind of expect to, you know, be there till the end, and yeah. she wasn't. So I wonder oh, yeah. if they had ever planned on having her through the entire series, or if this was always if they were always going to kill her off. So what I'm hoping Madison or the the idea of Madison is, and I, it's one thing to have a character die and not be mentioned again which is terrible but like mm. sometimes people can be symbols you know mm -hmm. the idea of no one no one's gone till they're gone or the idea of you know what being one way and then learning to be another way i don't know how that's going to play out in season six because i think i think people are going to be pushed to to i don't know be something even either worse or better mm -hmm. I, I have no idea but mm. i i have a feeling just like we were joking about seeing the hallucination of zombie madison mm -hmm. <laughs> alicia sees the hallucination of zombie madison i think something like that may come back like the idea of madison may still come into the season somehow with alicia especially like now that she has maybe sort of like a daughter figure in charlie in a weird way because i think she, they're if i'm not mistaken i think they are in the same scene together we're taking out walkers alicia and charlie yeah okay Al alicia charlie and janice oh okay alicia and charlie were in a season six still together but i'm not sure about janice being oh no okay. I, I i definitely saw they i wasn't sure about charlie but it was definite about janice or uh was it holly curran but there was still Charlie and Alicia standing out like in some wood and there's a bunch of dead walkers around them, but it's definitely Charlie and Alicia. Oh, okay. So the the still that I'm thinking of is is Alicia in a jumpsuit and they're killing they're killing walkers in a, yeah. and that's that's with Janice. And I think Charlie's there. This is with Charlie and Alicia and they're in like regular clothes and they're out in a like in the woods and there's a bunch of dead walkers laying around them. Gosh. Mm. Okay. Maybe that's after they escape Virginia's yeah. grasp. Exactly. <laughs> Only two weeks until we find out. Ooh. Gosh. Oh man. I'm trying not to get too excited. Like I really want to just like surprise myself and be like, it's tomorrow. <laughs> that's li yeah. literally me. We talked about this yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Here, here we go. This is on the heels of that. I feel like we said this before. What if the big bad is Madison? I, uh, think I well, she was initially when it was the first showrunners. She was supposed to become the biggest bad of all at the end of the series. Dave that was how they were going to end the show. I think that was but, a joke, though. <laughs> mm -mm. And then they threw that notion obviously out the window when the new showrunners came in. So it's oh, you're talking about the the ones before. Uh, it was the guy. It was the guy before um, Dave the, the, the one who created yeah before Chambliss and Goldberg. He was saying that Madison was supposed to become the big bad. I, this would be the way. <laughs> but like, we're, I'm talking about now though like what if this, it's totally possible like, i think designed. one of us has mentioned it in the past and what if like it's she's so bad that they need matt frewer like they need logan, logan to join them mm. i would be for that because then we get to see her die again <laughs> oh, that is such an evil like smirk on your face right now <laughs> the, rest, the rest of the chat like a lot of people from the chat are like with um like if madison came back now miss mazel seeing the scenario that i put up would you be interested in seeing yeah she's like oh dave and like yeah. <laughs> what if Madison was the cool big bad we had to get rid of? The big bad. I'd be cool to see that. I think big big bad see the thing about big bads on The Walking Dead, like a Negan, is that they're not always meant to be toppled though. However, there's so much interplay here that like what if this is one of those scenarios where where, you know, you're facing somebody that you have history with that you don't want to get rid of. I mean, normal people don't want to get rid of. <laughs> But it, it, what if you're put put in a situation where you you have to? Or like what if chain too. what if it goes to the slogan, the, uh, "No one's gone till they're gone"? What if we have to test that? That is fun. That is that'd be really great cool. story. What if all this development led to having to deal with this situation? What have we learned? And that's why I think it's good to have slow, quote unquote, filler episodes. Hmm. What are we saying? Madison would have been doing this whole time though. <laughs> like if she's the big bad, replenishing her armies. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean that that that's that's a lot because there's a lot of time that's passed. You need, like two episodes to find at least to find out what Madison's been doing. I, you know what I was thinking about that before we broadcasted today, and I was thinking to myself like, so many people want this person's backstory and that person's backstory, and I'm for it, but I'm also like not. I'm for it like it passively. Obviously, she didn't end up being the big bad, end up being uh, Virginia the big bad wolf. What do you think of Dave Erickson's plan originally to make Madison like the enemy? 
because I'm actually okay with what Andrew Chambliss and Ian Goldberg did about, I mean, not killing her off. I'm, I, I whatever. I have issues with that. Like, especially after Frank Delane wanted to leave. Okay. Why wouldn't you change your plan just a little bit? You know, that's, that's mm -hmm. one too many people. But then Erickson's idea about making Madison the, the enemy seems just a bit off to me. And off? I can, yeah, like ultimately, how do you turn your protagonist into the ultimate enemy? Like, I like the idea and concept. But I, like, how do I you think of a few that? ways? I think it, I could think of a few ways to, to, I mean, they had their chance when Charlie killed Nick for Madison to turn evil and bad. That would have triggered a mother, I think, into being a villain. Um, mm -hmm. I honestly, I almost, I, I can't say for sure, but I feel like I almost would have liked the Madison character more if she were a bad guy. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, it just I, seemed like she was like always my... a bad guy, though. Yeah, from the beginning. I mean, she was like, you know, she's all tough and... Well, and she tended some... tends to, like, gravitate towards the villains, too. I mean, she almost instantly formed that creepy bond with Troy. But yeah. only in as much as to protect her kin, that sort of thing. Like, let, I, let, mm. me, see, let me see how I can manipulate this guy. Mm and then be on the I, safe side. See, that's not what I saw. I didn't see yeah. that. I saw her truly connecting more with Troy than her own children. That's what I saw. I saw that too, yeah. I interpreted that, that way <laughs> differently. Way differently. But that's that's why everybody's got a different opinion. Yeah, and and part of that's part of the, the reason I didn't like her. I always felt like Madison didn't care enough for her children. I felt like she, she would say, I'm doing this for my kids, but then her actions would completely contradict that. Yeah, that that was there was the one thing that only made me pause was that like I don't know any mother that would be well, I don't know but I'm biased but like I don't know any mom would be okay with their children like leaving yeah do, doing whatever and coming back in this kind of world right but you know that being said this is why her c character is so interesting is because or interesting in that like letting their kids go off to just to come back maybe she knew so that's the thing she has such a really interesting grasp on what their what their expectations of, of her children were. when when tro when sorry not Troy when Nick left for and and he was gone for an extended period of time it's only at that point where she actually started like going oh man what if he's out there what if he's out there what, what's happening what's going on that's the only time I saw her and and we we've seen where Nick or where um Madison has this like uncanny attachment to Nick rather than anybody else mm -hmm. because she's always yeah. had to worry about him right? and Alicia feels that too right she says yeah. it on a few occasions like what about oh, me we, we can see that in her face like you know the very very beginning in season one when Nick's all screwed up with drugs and she's always going you know, to take care of Nick and Alicia's just like oh there you go again right what about right. me I always chalk that up to her being a therapist though like it's always the therapist kids that suffer the most sure that you know makes what I mean? sense yeah. like, they, makes like absolute the, sense they're like the worst parents <laughs> Which is why I, I like the show. I like the show because because of that. Like it made sense to me that yeah. she would be a terrible mother. Well, not like a terrible <laughs> mother. But it shows the screwed upness, like that screwed upness that will happen in yeah. families like that. Yeah. yeah. I also guess we can say the Clarks are probably the most real family, yeah. right? Because yeah. they're screwed yeah. up. They're they have flaws. Even the mom. Mom's not perfect. Well, far yeah. From I mean, she <laughs> she lied about you know how their their father died. And yeah, how how, yeah. how bad was yeah. that? Aye, aye, aye. But yeah, I mean, but th and that shows how screwed up she is in a real way. All right, so let's continue with this clip because this is going to be absolutely hilarious. What happens? You oh my fucking god! What <laughs> <laughs> yes, it fell on my knee. Okay, it's not my fault. <laughs> I'm dying. Oh you witnessed me god. die here. <laughs> I just thought... oh Where did god. you see it? It was behind you. And oh, above where you. is it? Behind you with a knife. <laughs> it's on my lap. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so really look out, quickly. Look out, look out. <laughs> so <laughs> it's merely the cork that opens the bottle, and then information starts to flow slowly from that point on, motherfucker. <laughs> I, I gotta show you how big this thing is, too. It's huge! <laughs> if I can. Think of a mosquito. <laughs> multiply it by three. There look like 30 mosquitoes. Oh my god, this is whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember I was dying watching this. And it got Me cut too. out. Yeah, we had to make a clip of it because I think we cut it out of the uh, of the edit. It was like, fuck this. This is not going in. It's just terrible. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, I hit it. Like, just, I honestly, the weird part is I, I hit it and it just went dormant. And so I was like, <laughs> 
I was able to, to scoop it up. Like it wasn't smashed or anything. I was able to scoop it up and like hold. You could just see the whole thing. Uh, and I, oh, so you like so punched gross. a mosquito? Dave punched a mosquito. I, I, no, I just kind of went like with my two fingers, went tap, and it just died. <laughs> It just, <laughs> I gave it the, the five finger death punch or something. Nice. Or it's very this- like <laughs> karate kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh this is the- he wants what they have, yeah. which, you know, he wants it right now, you know, but I also see a little bit of hope, like, you know, they've been through some shit and he's heard the way they talk to each other and, you know, if they can do it, you know, if they can have it, why can't he, yeah. you know, there's reason to, to, to stay hopeful. I think. Dwight. And he's been on this path for so long, mm-hmm. like, over a year. Yeah. So why stop now at this rate? I, mean, I just hope that when he does find Sherry, um, I mean, she already said, you know, stop looking for me. So when he does find her, because I think he will, I think we'll find Sherry. Um, you know, is she, how is she going to react to him? Is she going to be excited to see him or no? Right. I, okay. I, so I kind of have a feeling that she's not, and that's going to crumble him. And yeah. he's going to go through through some like Morgan shit. I, like, he's going to kind of, I'm kind of feeling that too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even in my notes, I said, like, be careful what you wish for. Yeah. This, this is what has thing. kept him alive for so long. That has been his purpose. Is, that's what driven him for so long. And, you know, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and like it's kind of like and you know it gives me the opportunity to kind of bring up something that well honestly it was like you know Sherry did mm-hmm. get Dwight to steal Daryl's bike you know and she said like she never thought about it until now and and could it have been that Sherry was always putting him in these kinds of positions only to kind of make him like the, the person that suffers like okay I'll handle the situation mm-hmm. you just stay on the sidelines and be a good boy good point so does this mean I was right about Sherry might being the big bad I think we all had felt that too like we all had a feeling that maybe oh there goes my moment I'm still no. really feeling that <laughs> you can claim I'm, it that's fine but I'm still really really feeling that if Sherry's I, I'm gonna go ahead and say she is the big bad but yeah. if not she's at least with the big bad yeah because why i know i said this before but why else has she not been around this whole time why hasn't I she been trying Sharon to did. find him I see you. instead of leaving these little like you know easter egg hunts or yeah. like no yeah she okay. could have been looking for him too <laughs> oh, but no she's being jealous and you know sending him on a wild goose chase tom says um it's madison's fault no what if sherry is madison <laughs> <Stop it. laughs> she's got like a whisper of madison <laughs> <laughs> Take off the sherry mask. <laughs> Surprise, bitches! <laughs> I would have gotten away with it too. What <laughs> the musky kids and then Morgan too. Wait, wait, wait. Say Morgan. <laughs> 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 I'm really, really sorry. Uh, no, it was great. I'm just it imagining her coming on the show and be like, I don't like you people. <laughs> <laughs> don't like you one bit. But Momo. Oh, Go fuck Momo. yourself, you, you, you. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you, fuck you, fuck you. That bitch broke my stick. <laughs> <laughs> Wait now, <laughs> if you don't un- if you don't understand the reference to <laughs> like <laughs> uh, Morgan, so Lenny as Morgan is having this character is is having this conversation with Alicia. I, I think in the first episode when they get to the uh, the rest stop uh, when they're trying to find uh, Logan, like Logan sends them on the wild goose chase. They're in the re- and they're having this heart to heart about like you know what they've been able to accomplish and, Le- and Alicia's kind of losing her faith and Morgan saying you can't do it all on your own. You have to open the door to possibility <laughs> and she goes but what if i don't know how and then he and then morgan you know he lets out this like i don't know (laughs) and we talk about it in the episode and so i'm bringing it back here like when you're talking about the scooby-doo moment (laughs) and it stuck with me ever since like like what if that was like lenny james like lenny james is like 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 improvised moment like where he goes i don't fucking know like I can't get that laugh that out of my head. I'm surprised, I'm surprised it never comes up more often and, and like when we're talking about it but like these two moments is so oh my god I'm surprised that it make the first clip like when we're talking about the first episode I can't remember why like why I chose one over the other I'm crying now um, what if Sherry's oh, mad but let's get serious here because I saw Sherry nodding about what if Sherry's the big bad what what do you have to say about that Sharon D um, I mean I don't think she's the big bad obviously Virginia is but I was nodding because Rachel, Rachel had commented, maybe she's the big bad, or she's with the big bad. And I was like, yeah, that's that's what it is. She's with the big bad. I, I don't know. I think that uh, she and Dwight are going to be together. I think she's going to be happy to see him. I think there's something else going on there. Like, maybe the only reason she's not is because she's worried about him.
of being in with the settlers, or maybe they are knowing what they know after being with Megan. Maybe they're the ones that start a resistance. Maybe they get back. Maybe they hook up in the settler compound and they start the resistance because they know what Virginia is like having dealt with Megan. Mm. Right. So Sharon, do you th- when when we when we find Sherry, do you think she'll be uh, more of a prisoner slash captive held against her will, or do you think she'll be sort of a compliant member until she sees Dwight, and then all of a sudden maybe go, oh shit, what am I doing? I would be. I would think that she is a compliant member until she sees Dwight. Okay. Because otherwise, it would be very hard to live in settler compound if you weren't compliant. They just kill you. Yeah. I mean, so, she could I mean, be she was, working I mean, against her will did. just to survive. But, right. Right. So I think maybe she's like, hey, I'm here. I might as well fit in. I told Dwight not looking for me. This is what it's going to be. Yeah. And but then she she does see Dwight, and maybe that kind of triggers them to start a resistance against Virginia. I feel like if she can uh, be one of Negan's wives, whatever Virginia's asking her to do is nothing compared to that. <laughs> yeah. Which is why I actually kind of go opposite you guys because I know there's a listen from what I know from what you guys have talked to talked to me about uh, through the, throughout like the comics world. I know that Sherry Sherry actually becomes this crazy badass kind of um, to the point <laughs> yeah, for where like she's- a minute <laughs> Right, right. Well, because of how she goes in the comics, which is which, so bad, <laughs> so stupid. It's it is even, so stupid. It's not even worth mentioning because it'll never happen. But here's what I can see, though. I can see a world in which Sherry becomes this badass, like because of her experience with Negan and because of her experience with Sherry. Now, I don't think she's going to resist, but I think is like she's going to want to take over. And then, like you, you know how sometimes when you when you beat when you beat when you beat the man, you get to be the man, kind of thing. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. after living in the shadow and or under the boot of these people, it's like she wants a taste of power. And you could always, and this is something that well, kind of what dovetailing about what Walani says is like she always had these tendencies to like more than to survive, we need to thrive, and and maybe taking what's not yours is that is a means to get that end, right? But like in a in like maybe a refined sherry is kind of like well all's fair in love and war and i'm gonna i'm gonna do something that you know maybe a bridge too far for dwight you know mm-hmm. and maybe dwight goes along with it which he kind of does in the comic a little bit until mm-hmm. a certain point where sherry gets away from him which is kind of like why i'm saying all that glitters is not gold right like that you know the thing you were looking after is something that it doesn't exist anymore yeah you know yeah. what i mean dwight's and, very much just you know stand by your woman kind of man no matter what because so. that, that's what kept him going it, it's what made yeah. him a allowed him to do shitty things. Mm-hmm. It was like, I, if I'm doing shitty things, it keeps her For safe. Her. I'm very interested to see the pairing between Dwight and Althea this season coming up. I mean, we know there can't be any romantic thing there, so I mean, that, that's probably the best pairing. And I'm interested to see the dynamic between Dwight, Sherry, and Althea. Althea just going ham on Sherry. Like, where have you been? What's been up? what did you go through? Like, maybe we find out about her past through these, like, maybe short clips from Althea's videos of Sherry. With, with Gimple as chief content officer too, by the way, this is why I think why I think like ultimately they may go the road of the comics but through just a weird very more different clever path same resistance different uh, different people and, yeah. and definitely different outcome too this is a, a special so now we're in between seasons and uh and, and Meg has a problem I literally want the first Uh-oh. movie to, to start at the moment the helicopter picks Rick up yes yeah. you know they won't mm. it's gonna be like in Medius Res it's gonna be like I it's gonna be like in the middle of everything cool, that, that way. I, I, I think a they, that's smooth a, it's a transition. I don't. Yeah, I think they're not going to do that. No, because you want to start like action packed, get you hooked immediately. So they're going to start it in the middle and then work their way back. Yeah, yeah, because you want to you want to break people's brain. Like, hey, wait, wait, where are we? What's going on? Who? Where in time are we? Then wait, why does he look like that? And then you start absorbing the information more and more because you want to figure out where you oh. are, why we're doing this. <laughs> who are these? How- <laughs> How psyched out would you be if it opens up with him in a hospital bed again, waking up? <laughs> That'd be awesome. Well, that is perfect. That would be, that that would would be perfect. perfect. Or something similar to that. <laughs> like, just waking up, yeah, and, like, looking around again and being like, fuck. <laughs> 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 Yeah. It's, like, it's like a Bob Hart show, and they're like they're like flowers near his bed. Yeah, like, like just yep. like messed up shit. Yeah, yeah. Just to really like really mind fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I think Meg nailed it on the head. Honestly, I, I think it'll start in the middle somewhere, and and then and then it'll backtrack to fill in the blanks. Yeah, or I mean, I don't know. Maybe they don't. Maybe they just talk about it. Chris's idea really got in my head though. Like, but not like waking up in the hospital bed like for real, but more like kind of like the way season eight, yeah, with the uh, Owl Festival. That was the yeah. Owl Festival f- mindfuck. Um, 
what was great about that is that it mimicked a little bit what what, what went on in the hospital. Like he looks around, looks at the watch, looks at you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he saw flowers in that dream sequence, but that. And so I like that idea for the movies. Like, why don't they sort of do the same thing? It looks like a hospital bed instead of a hospital bed, hospital bed. Maybe it's like a therapy bed, or you know, you look around, you see similar items, or like he's looking in the same way he, as he did in the hospital, but completely different setting, completely different context. Not injured, but maybe mentally, I don't know, incapacitated, or maybe ever, I don't know. But something similar to that. If he was already healed, that would be a good indication of a significant amount of time passing as well. Yeah, and how is he going to look like too? That's that's a whole other ball of wax mm-hmm. too. Uh oh, this Peter- guy's interesting. So this is Peter Jacobs. Oh yeah, do from hell. <laughs> other things. Is he in a tuxedo? It looks like it. He looks <laughs> tuxedo. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, it's missing the tie. He it's does look dressed horrible. up, or maybe not a tuxedo, but maybe like just a blazer. Wait, hold up. Also, I-, I need to back this up for a sec. Looks like he's looking for somebody. Is he wearing a yarmulke? No. No. Oh, I no. no. I mean, maybe. He might oh, be. Yeah, right? yeah, now it kind of looks like Oh, like, right? look at the very, very top. Well, well, that first yeah, Jewish right? character Literally. on The Walking Dead, right? I'm sure somebody else has been Jewish. He just probably didn't huh. This was interesting. <laughs> I couldn't tell if he was holding the door shut or, like Ashley said, looking for somebody. I, he looks yeah. like he's looking for somebody. Yeah. Morgan butt touching. <laughs> Did you remember that comment? <laughs> it's a synagogue. Okay, you know how I know? <laughs> Okay, I did not no. see that. So this is uh, what, this is called a near tamid. This is a light that's always oh. on, no matter what. Boom, boom. Whoa. There's a, there's like, this, this is a menorah. See, yeah. I can't even see that. Yeah, I, Maybe this is where we run into Peter Jacobson. That's right. Mm. He is Jewish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like into the tr- Maybe it's kind of like Father Gabriel. Yeah. Oh, my God. <gasps> what if he killed all those people? That's exactly <laughs> what I'm thinking. Exactly. Like oh he my locked God. all of his like I don't know if it's called like parishioners. I don't know what it's called. He locked all his people in. I don't know this i'm not religious i think it depends on the religion <laughs> yeah. so we locked a bunch of people no, you in could the call them parishioners it's just funny how you're awkward about it <laughs> no. Oh, no. The people who attend the service, lucky yeah. service. <laughs> in the building, they died. Boom, that's how they okay, are. And then they go this way. Yeah. And and then call they walk out. This. <laughs> this, this looks sketchy. Careful there. <laughs> this is, this is where a little uh, oh, rated. <laughs> this is right, so you got on the left hand side. I'm going to throw the ball all the way down. Yeah, and then they carry the Torah over here, and then they circle back here, and then they put We're it back inside. Get a field goal. Okay, and then we, yeah, exactly. Touch that. Touchdown. Yeah. So that's oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and break. <laughs> yeah, but I'm pretty psyched. See, I see. I didn't pay attention. See, I saw his yarmulke. I saw his kippah, as they say. And then I was just kind of like, what? Is that? And then so yeah, there's the synagogue. That's mm-hmm. pretty fun. It's all tying. It's all tying together. It's all coming together. <laughs> it, it is kind of funny like i did have we seen jews in the walking dead universe at all this far i don't think me if they i mean they have could they have been but... stop, they haven't it's not like they're like oh hey i'm jewish but you know? yeah thing, yeah because you know? religion doesn't really matter in the right. apocalypse well no, no, it shouldn't it matter the most in these times you'd, you'd think but <laughs> like survival matters I mean, you'd seen so much shit that, like, why would you have faith? Yeah. And people discuss, they discuss that. They butt heads when, uh, was it four walls and a roof? That was, was that what Yeah. It? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when yep. they, yeah. They, they kind of discuss that a lot. Yeah, and there's a yep. yarmulke. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, yeah. There. Harley. Oh, I didn't even notice Wait, that. It's that a yarmulke? Right there. Oh, that's, yeah, that is. That's a yarmulke. Yeah. It's, a, it's a gray one. Mm. <laughs> oh, this is Charlie. <laughs> this is Charlie, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Top of the hair. And this is the synagogue, I think, too. Yeah. Different angle. I think you're right. The glass looks similar. The stained glass. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty interesting moment <laughs> and even better when we actually reach the episode called Nair Tamid which is kind of cool too mm-hmm. I saw you like l- laughing Sharon dude, because like I-, I titled this thing TWD Universe's first Jewish character but like as we find out near the almost the end of the season like like Sarah's been Jewish the whole time <laughs> yeah it's such well, a possibly like, the first is. yeah exactly technically the first and I titled that in the in the in the episode description. But I like when we find out, that's when we find out first. And so I don't know. Technically this, technically that. So as I was watching this, uh, you know, knowing that Sarah is really from, I couldn't stop thinking of, you know, if there was like a conversation there, like, oh, he's Jewish, you know, and Jeannie being in that conversation and going like, I'm Jewish. Oh my I'm god, mad. can you imagine? <laughs> 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 that was that's what was going in my mind. You know, her face, like, I'm Jewish. Wish. Which, by the way, this, do you remember when she says the stone soup parable? Like, stone soup, uh, sucking on a stone, that, that, that whole thing. That's a Jewish parable, too, by the way.
by the way. Yeah. Mm. So, so it was like, yeah. you know, Jew, Ginny just going, I'm Jewish. It doesn't yeah, it's matter. A, it's a, yeah, he's like, it, you know, we know all about having to pray in groups, you know, <laughs> be part of the group, yeah, which is, it's actually a thing. Like there is an extra special thing for praying in groups of 10, which is called a minyan. So it, which it's, it carries, or it's just, it's a better thing to do to pray in groups. But yeah, that stone suit parable is like an old, uh, I think Hungarian or Polish, like Jewish set them. They're running out of food and they drop the stones in the, in the soup to make it look like it's fuller. And mm -hmm. so, and so everybody feels like when they're eating, they feel fuller because because they they see it and they there's like a genuine con like people congregating you know and, and just trying to make do you know yeah. which is basically kind of what Ginny is doing in a way she's trying to make it seem as though things are getting better whereas our group is determined to show the absolute truth no matter what yeah to find out later where they always film everything oh you may not want to film that no we need to show everybody exactly what's really going on yeah i love yeah. that and we we end up talking about that too which is great and this 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 clip is is gold validating what i'm thinking is the reaction the Literally. reaction from most people were like people were losing their minds people were saying things that didn't make sense they, they were saying things like, Whoa, we're, we're going to see Rick soon. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're I not. Like, you're so not. We learned from that trailer. Fact, by the way, by the way, this confirms that you're not going to see him for at least two years. Like yeah. about two years. And, and they got so upset with me. I feel like the only piece of information that we learned from this trailer is that it's coming to theater. So that yeah. is literally, they, they did not. Yeah. That, but this. that's a big thing. She was so that's upset by they this. They could have mentioned it. Like, oh yeah, by the way, boom, it's coming to theaters. Yeah, but you could have mentioned it. Yeah. But like, but then you didn't have CG in a <laughs> helicopter to do it with. Like, there's a vehicle. Yeah. But, just... I, but it is the reaction. It is people lost their rational mind for oh, yeah. an extended period of time as a result of seeing this. Like, days. For like at least a day I saw it. I, I saw it days. And I'm like, holy shit, should I chime in? Should I bust their bubble? Do it. And I did it a couple <laughs> times. And I regret it. I think we lost followers. <laughs> As a result, we might have lost followers. That's because not of the, that. point. Oh, the point. The fact fuck that them, they're stupid. <laughs> is like, okay, that, they did the right move. Like, it doesn't tell us Eat anything right. because then we have to clear the record on air. Like, you're not seeing Rick for another year and a half. I'm sorry. Especially since he's filming another movie right now. But I don't mind telling people. Yeah, I just saw that too. Yeah, I just saw the picture today. Oh my gosh. Is it, do you really think it's another movie or do you think it's this movie? No, it's another movie. It's this another movie isn't even finished. It's got Naomi like, Watts in it. Yeah, I saw the picture of him on set and I was like, Shh, whatever, keep, keep, you know, trying to trick us. We all know he's filming the Walking Dead movie. Um, <laughs> it's called Penguin Bloom. It's him and Naomi Watts. They play a married couple. A family takes in an injured magpie that makes a profound difference in their lives. Amina? If you go on his IMDb, <laughs> and there's two upcoming projects, Penguin Bloom and Untitled, the Walking Dead movie. There's Ooh. Penguin. Those are the only two Ooh. upcoming. That's the working okay. title. The, the movie's actually called Grocery Money. <laughs> <laughs> Guys gotta eat. <laughs> this Walking Dead movie ain't coming out for a while. I love how Meg just didn't get oh, it. Oh, I get it right. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I cut like, I gotta the pay extended my period yeah. of time where she didn't get it. This is called <laughs> utility bills. Until this Do you know where he lives? <laughs> yeah, on to, on to the ride, grocery you, store you for see him where he lives. Would be very expensive. Then again, I don't know if he's buying the groceries. <laughs> exactly the point. <laughs> he can't pay his butler. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so it's like I just love how much of a hard time she had with like this 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 reveal. Meg doesn't get fundamental marketing. You can't just tell people people that it's going to be a full feature you have to show them appearing in theaters in 2023 or something like 2022 then they see the helicopter going D -d 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 -d. like come on man you got to make a thing of it you know but she was having a hard time with it i'm like dude but you have to get her hopes up like yes we have to get your hopes up like that we want you to lose your fucking mind we want you to lose your fucking mind i see where she was coming from though honestly like if you're gonna put out a movie trailer like put some meat in it there was absolutely nothing Nothing in that trailer. Yeah, trailer. It wasn't even a trailer. That's but that's nothing. the whole point. It got you talking that you for don't... like a minute. <laughs> No, some of these people were like, can you, people are still like saying, when are we, you know what, actually, no, you're right. But it took them like a year to stop talking about the movies. Oh, maybe we'll see this. Maybe we'll see that. Oh, it's go soon. It's coming. And then the pandemic hit. And then actually, yeah. when the pandemic hit, everybody stopped talking about it. That's true. Sort of like in the, in the realm of like, oh yeah. Oh, summer, uh, sorry, spring of 2021. Like, no, <laughs> they haven't even written the movie up yet, man. Like, see, the on. movie, the movie is another one of those things that I will get excited for when I can say, I'm going to see it tomorrow. <laughs> 
No, I'll get more. Until then, I'll get more excited. I'll have a bit better idea of when we'll see Rick again once they've started filming, which they haven't done yet. They haven't started filming yet. Do they even have a script? That's what I'm saying. I think you know. That's why I'm I'm like not excited at all, and I jump on the. Is there even a movie? Because if there is not a script, there is no movie yet. Yeah. I think hey, that's you know what? Die Hard was made started with only three pages of script, and then they wrote the rest of the movie during filming. So they got this <laughs> and rewrote. Don't need a don't need a full script to start a movie. <laughs> right. I almost wish that they had never mentioned the movie because now everything <laughs> in the walking is measured by how it's going to fit into the movie. Every everything. You're everything. so right. That's a good point. Something to think yeah. about. How is that going to fit movies? I, I don't care. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for what it is and not worry about how it's going to fit in a movie. Oh, I mean, it, it just drives me crazy. Every review, everything I read is like, oh, this happened. How's it going to fit in the movies? I, maybe they want fan ideas about what to do in the movie. So they're oh putting it God. out there. So to fit out the series. But it drives me crazy. I, I Everything, enjoy the show for its merit, not about how it's going to fit into the movies. You're this, absolutely right. This yeah. is where I come in because I'm not worried about that. Which, okay, yes, it is annoying. I, I find that. myself doing it though. I mean. Yeah, but only subtly because what what people have to understand about a movie and how you're going to get people to theaters there's something about that movie that has to appeal to a wide audience or else why fucking bother you're not <laughs> why would you create a movie that only your your niche fans would go to like yes you do have the yeah. audience right but you're going to want to do something that first of all i mean and this is going to be the hardest part about this movie you're going to have to make it so that an average person can go in watch the movie and it stands alone how do you do that without catching them up in some store in some form or fashion mm. right there's going to be some retreading you know at least in some sort of narrative way so they're going to tell us things that we already know basically what gimbal said at the same time somehow make it even better for people who know the material which again that's yeah. going to be really tough but what i mean by what i mean by all of this is to say that yes there may be some things that play in right it's kind of like okay this is exactly what it is, but think of it in reverse, how the Avengers movies spawned Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. gave you something uh, standalone. Like, you didn't need to see the movies to, to really appreciate Agents of, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, well, well. No, but for they, the most part, they did reference here and there yeah. the events of the movies, but like, you didn't need to see them to, to really get it. They kind of tread on it, tread over it, but even that is like a side piece, a side piece to the- and they'll, they'll fill in the information that you need from the yeah. movie if you didn't yeah. see it. That's why I think it's gonna focus on just what Rick's been doing. Right. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. and then uh, tell another story. So this is yeah. what I'm trying to say is don't get too annoyed with writers who think, oh, they're going to like cram it in kind of thing. And like, no, 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 no. You don't know anything about movies then because movies have yeah. to have to have. First of all, it's like a book. Movies like that, they have to have a, a beginning and a closing, you know, whereas the show has an arc over several episodes or several seasons. Mm -hmm. You know, no, movies have to have a definitive start and a definitive, even if there are sequels. You a burp -er. Baby. Why is she crying? Though. Okay. That Sadiqa. baby's got too much hair to be a newborn, so well, you've well, never seen a newborn with a lot of I, hair. Yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a newborn. Newborns can have a lot of hair, though. Yeah, well, one thing the baby's wearing clothes, so it's not like the baby's just born. <laughs> okay, <basically. laughs> I'm gonna guess this one here is roughly two to three months old. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm agreeing with. Yeah. No, younger well, than, maybe younger closer than three to months. two. Yeah. I was gonna say yeah. definitely yes. younger than three months. Yes, absolutely. No, because I know some people in the chat were saying like this was the shot was when she just gave birth and that can't no, be. Oh no. That makes close. no sense. No. You know, babies don't come feeling. out with a shirt on. That's. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can confirm <laughs> that. <laughs> that <laughs> babies um, are not born with clothes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'd be a rough aren't? birth too i have personal experience but my mother assured me that i was not born with clothes right? <laughs> <laughs> i guess babies are technically born with skin suits right because they have the they're in the i don't know anything about babies i don't have one but, uh they're in the amniotic sac or whatever and then that's technically skin so they're just, they're born in skin suits right yeah they're bro they're born whispers <gasps> <laughs> 
<laughs> what happens if you're pregnant and the baby dies inside of you? Does it turn into a walker and like claw its way out? Yes. Have you not seen that movie? <laughs> <laughs> Dawn, the new Dawn of the Dead? No, what? Oh. <laughs> I say new because it they did that remake, which shouldn't have been a remake because it absolutely the only similarity is that it took place in a mall. Yeah, yes, I remember. It was horrible, but yeah, there was a, a pregnant woman on there, and the baby died inside of her. You know, I had a Reddit discussion with somebody who actually asked this question, and um, the thing about it is, is walkers are determined by desire, but they're also determined that their, their motor skills are from learned behavior. Well, a baby, all it knows is nothing. And so I said, best case scenario, you may you may have a baby that just cries forever. I mean, best case scenario, worst case scenario, all it does is this forever. It has, you're talking about a baby that's in utero, depending on how long, far along. It has these like paper thin, like almost rubbery nails. Like it's only until like, like a week, like a couple weeks later where they're kind of that razor sharp thing going on. And depending on how long it is in utero, they might not have fingernails at all you know and so there's that then there's the brain development so even then it's like what happens you know it doesn't it has does has no learned motor function skills so all it can maybe do is this it right. would still feel hungry i feel yes. like. i feel like zombies feel hunger and that's why they're just looking for food that's but the only thing they feel but hunger. it does it has the id but it doesn't have the the wherewithal the learned behavior that from, right. the, from the neocortex to like know how to get it so it's yes. not going to grab for anything it's not it's just gonna just go like this forever <laughs> yeah. like mimicking what was in utero and and everybody from that reddit thread it was like that's sad <laughs> Right? Or terrified if like all it knew what to do was cry because they don't know how to cry until they're out. Right. You know? And then that's the only thing they know how to express. But if they were in, like, but can you imagine that worst case, the best case scenario oh. I say, like where all it does is cry eh, forever. That'd be terrible. God, put that shit down. <laughs> 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 like yeah. unborn unborn alarm clocks like forever that's hell oh yeah. my God. Alarm clock. that's <laughs> That's the clip for people to kind of walk in and see this tape and see what they can do to help, etc. And basically, um, when you watch the episode, you have to make note of what they say in the beginning of the tape, of the beginning of the tape that they watch, and then what at the end of the tape. Because it's it's also for us as viewers, because the one big critique about this season has been what the fuck is it about helping people like yes. this isn't what the walking dead is about you help people you die you know like yeah you know, right yeah that's been the mantra of the walking dead right yep. right yeah. and so the the whole point of my my saying this is that um this episode is kind of an answer to that critique in a way because you see them evolve from just helping people to absolve themselves from their sins and whatever mm -hmm. um to actually changing and tweaking things around like the more they help others the more they um the more they actually kind of um the, the answer is more into something where like them admitting that they need help with things like a, a large amount of them are admitting to themselves oh all this time i was giving help to others but not realizing that i kind of need help mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yeah. i need help saying goodbye i need help yeah. finding my yeah. path you know i need help figuring out how to make the, the this world as much as it was the last world world that sort of thing mm -hmm. so so each each person morphs from the beginning of the video to what to the end of the video and so that's what that's kind of what i really liked about the tape is because it, it not only wasn't as, as it was as it was intended which was an accounting of their capabilities like we can help you here's a demonstration no right. it, it, it was it became more than just that it, you could see a discovery of themselves in this one video mm -hmm. and i th and that's what i got away from this from this um from this episode actually like the answer or the uh, the paradigm from the beginning of the season is changing, you know, and so and so they're changing as a result. So, so like they're they're like evolving into different Pokemon right now, like throughout the last <laughs> half of the season. In my opinion, like it's that's that's how I see it because it's like it's not enough. I mean, we all know it's not enough because that that it's gonna eventually get you killed. That's what I was saying before, Sharon. Do like when we were talking about like what these videos mean and, and keep filming, etc. Get the ugly yeah. truth, and then you'll figure yourself out. For me, it was. Uh, like a, a version of I lose people, I lose myself. Is uh, I help people, I help myself. Yeah, that's funny. That's a really mm. clever way of putting it. The idea of like him, like uh, I forgot to do something. Like I forgot to say goodbye to my family. Like I forgot to let this go. Mm. It's been the the 
core thing that's made me, that's destroyed me, that's made me do things to myself that I shouldn't have done, you know, all this time. And he's like, and by the end of the episode, it's like, each one of these characters is saying, help me do this, help me do that. I need, or I need help doing this. I need help letting go. I need help saying goodbye. Um, and I th in the, I'm linking this to Grace now because I think in a way, helping her prepare for her end will help him say goodbye. And then what, oh. right? Like what, like yeah. he has the yeah. chance closure, to say the goodbye. Closure he needs. Yeah. This is like a living yeah. way of like, I have a chance to say goodbye. Like, an, and like probably yeah. an extended period of time for him to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. And oh, I just had a terrible thought yeah i just had a terrible thought like what does it look like this is so bad what does it look like <laughs> for grace like okay so she has a brain tumor right what if she dies from that brain tumor what kind of walker does she turn into <laughs> like i'm sorry that's like no. does she turn into a walker <laughs> <laughs> like there's like a science here that we're not and sure. it's terrible like, does the walker just go ooh like because it doesn't know how to do things <laughs> the tumor key yeah like the baby right when you're having a, having a serious thought about what it means to say goodbye then i have this stupid <laughs> thought about like oh yeah but what would brain tumor grace look like as a walker because <laughs> what if you die know, right? from that brain tumor right like what's what the fuck <laughs> i guess what part of the brain the tumor is in oh god if the tumor on the motor skills then you wouldn't get you yeah, you get the baby uh, effect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We 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 can't, we we don't know where you know where exactly the brain tumor is. So I keep her as a walker. Find <laughs> out if it affects her or not it, as a walker. I said, is it on the aggression? Oh yeah, like, like, ah! like twenty eight days later or whatever. Yeah, it's it's kind of <laughs> gross. <laughs> My whole thing is that I don't think I don't think Wes is Wes. I really like, you don't think that's his thing. name as it is. Mm -hmm. I think Wes is Derek. Derek, his brother. Wanna Wait, walk, what, hold wanna, on. <laughs> want to walk with me? Um, want to walk with me on this one? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, they have to pull me along, so I'm a little I'm, slow right now. But okay. So so why is let, yeah. let me take your hands because it's clear <laughs> that and then I'll, I'll drag you kicking and screaming into my theory. Um, All right. Wes, Wes mentions his brother Derek, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And mentions that he kind of bit it like earlier on, right? Uh, like early, early on. Um, yep. And uh, and what I'm thinking the bike is the bike is Derek's, quote unquote, also. Mm -hmm. Or his brother. And I was just thinking, like, what if what if Derek assumed Wes's identity? Wes is the one who makes who cre creates the actual manuscript. You know, uh, Derek mm. is the one who actually takes his brother's bike, Wes. Um, and 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 maybe even, and I'm I'm kind of an over under on like whether this is true. Maybe Derek, um, you know, Wes, you know, not Wes, Derek. Um, was painting the trees at first until something happened, you know, in honor of his brother, you know, his brother's memory and his manuscript. And like, maybe he held onto the manuscript, something that he wrote as kind of like to honor his name, to keep him going and stuff like that. And so the the brother is actually painting actually, the trees and wrote the, and then when he died, uh, yeah, he, one or the other, who like, we know as Wes came up and said, I'm, I'm Wes. This is me. I right. That. The, yeah. I wrote this. Uh, yeah. These are my trees. Yeah. And the, the reason that made me think that that and yeah. I wasn't a hundred percent sure when I first thought it up but like when you see the, the tree that we'll call him Wes for now because that's what we know him at, as but yeah. when you see the tree that Wes is at at the end it looks different than the other trees am I right old older looks it looks older, older. Like it looks been there longer it looks unpainted it's very simple there's no flames at the bottom there's no blue it's it's just done a lot more and the simple hand, the hand something myself, maybe different. that's too. the original tree maybe that's real Wes's tree no wait, as far as the flames I thought the flames was only on Alicia's tree. No. I saw it on the wraparound tree too. The wraparound tree, it was on the, do you remember yeah. the screenshot I took when we, cover, when we were about to cover the trailers? Yeah. And I showed you the, the two trees, which I guess mm -hmm. happened to be true. <laughs> um, Just to kind of bookend that, I was saying also, like, not only did he, so Wes could still be Wes, let's say, right? But at the same time, Wes could have taken Derek, the the concept of Derek, the idea of his brother, and said, you know, I, I did the manuscript, I did the, so like, meaning he took on what his all the achievements his brother did to make him live on or he took his or they swap names and and Derek Derek is the um he's Derek but he's honoring his brother Wes you know that that idea I wish they played with that too because otherwise it's just a guy and he's just a foil for everybody else he's saying okay I guess I'll come along fuck you guys <laughs> but I'll come along that was a fun mm -hmm. thing at the time though too like because every every
every episode we're like, oh, is he going to tell it now? Is he going to tell it now? Yeah. Oh, wait, they're just painting trees? Oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> all right, I guess. That's fine. I guess it's okay. Right. Kids are kind of important. I mean, you know, kill the stupid ones, but I mean, <laughs> it's not one that can do She's obviously going to make it. So. I'm so uncomfortable here, <laughs> by the way. They can kill what's his face. I'm so um, uncomfortable. The brother of the one that was in regular Walking Dead. Dylan? Yeah, because oh. he's like nothing. <gasps> kill are Dylan! Kill it? Oh my oh, god. That's so Wow, man. Dylan, like, <laughs> he contributes nothing. He's like Sam. You contribute Aww. nothing. It's a Donatin thing, what can I say? <laughs> Off to the gas chambers with you, Dylan. <laughs> Could be an age thing, too. I don't know. I don't know how no, old he is. Look at Judith. Look at Judith. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to hear. Look at look at Judith's mom Judith though. Judith is the exception. You yeah, don't. Look, at Judith, look at Judith's mom. No, I can't. She's Lori's, dead. Lori is Lori's not Judith's mom. Fuck Lori. It's Michonne. Michonne is Judith's mom. Oh, I'm about to have an aneurysm. <laughs> Like, you know, to, poor Dylan, he's got Annie me. to teach him how to I mean, like, look at survive. RJ. Look at, like, oh, RJ's man. gonna get bit. I don't care. <laughs> I, I mean, really, though. I mean, we haven't seen him training with anyone. Right? Chris? Look, look at all these defenses. Back, back yeah. These are so useless. Yeah. I'm pretty sure why? RJ's gonna bite it eventually. W why aren't they in my belly? <laughs> Where they belong? I to have a very it. important oh, statement to say. <laughs> kids would probably be pretty tender. kids. <laughs> We're not doing this. <laughs> I bet I bet children would be pretty tender though. Oh, boy. Good meat. Oh, That'd be good meat. It'd be, it'd be a little gamey. Where's Chris they? right now? Be honest. I need Chris. Especially Dylan. He's got those big chubby cheeks. I'd cut it right there. Baby. Oh, boy. <laughs> Baby. Oh, uh, so you're a little hungry, I <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, on, like, little skewers? <laughs> you wouldn't even have to take the heads off. That's like... Kid kebabs. A little apple in the mouth, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it's turning dark really fast. Per perfect punchline right here. <laughs> well, I can tell you you won't be on a pike. <sighs> yeah. Um, yeah. What if, right? Okay, now you're just fucked up. I'm fucked up? <laughs> Honestly, Meg is, Meg, <laughs> Meg is taking a machine gun to all these children except for Judith. And like, then the second I say, what if Judith, she's like, you're fucked up, dude. Like, you're fucked up. Really? <laughs> I'm fucked up? After all that, I'm yeah. the one with problems. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, man. You know, listening back to that, I can see why we got into a bit of trouble. Because <laughs> <laughs> us, without context, because first of all, <sighs> we go into that clip saying like, oh, we definitely need to procreate. We, that, and yes. It essentially has to happen. But yeah. then, but, you know, kill the stupid <laughs> ones, right? Well, I mean, yes, we need too, people. You know, like, no, it wasn't. <laughs> well, you weren't talking about killing kids, were you? Characters. Oh, okay. What? Not <laughs> children in real life but like this is supposed to emulate real life this is if it were revenge, the, okay this clip is titled yeah. revenge of killing kids right okay, anyway sorry if we were really in the apocalypse and you were traversing through the forest with a screaming crying baby i'm yeah. sorry you're telling me you're you're, you're just gonna, gonna be like twist its head uh, off and uh, <laughs> what no i, don't I mean know. i'm not saying it would be easy but if it no, came down like, to your life go to sleep go to sleep <laughs> go to sleep no <laughs> uh, i hate I, I hate to say it but i don't even know if i could do that like this it this fills my guts with like rage just to say this out loud but i would almost pull a whisperer and just sort of set it down early on we see Lori worrying about that like mm -hmm. what if he cries all the time and mm -hmm. you know puts everyone in danger so maybe you could just say that Lori started this conversation yeah well and then we see it in effect when Lizzie and Mika have Judith and Judith is crying and Lizzie almost suffocates her. Yeah, exactly. Do you remember the finale of MASH in um, uh, Hawkeye is, is having um, mental issues and he tries to go back and figure out what it was and turns out that they were on a bus with a bunch of uh, peasants in Berea and he he thought that one of the peasants had a chicken and the, uh, North Viet I mean, the North Koreans were coming and so the woman filled the chicken to keep it from squawking so that the North Koreans wouldn't hear but turned out it was a woman's baby. Oh. And she smothered the Oh. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> what a show. Same, it, same concept, it, yeah. Sur for survival. But eating children would solve the eating your pets dilemma. Yeah. <laughs> 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 And, and here's yeah. the, like the shitty argument to that, right? Let me just explain the shitty argument. 
what do you think would taste better? This is the uh, shitty well, ooh. Pets mm. or this luscious, you know, hairless hey, baby? I don't you know. know. It would all be speculation. Not to, use, not to use science, but they do say that uh, humans taste better. Well, especially babies, because they don't, they don't eat all the toxic stuff exactly. that we eat. If you don't know what you're eating, you can always convince yourself it's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yeah, I learned that very early on when I <laughs> ate frog, and my my yep. grandfather told me it was chicken. Yep, so, you know, the same. It's, it's- gator alligator tail. tail. Oh yeah, I've had oh. I've had gator. Yeah. It- and it does. It really does taste just like it's like chicken nuggets when you eat it fried. Yep. Yeah, you have to, but it has to be done well because I've had gator. I mean, two out of the three times I've had gator, it's been a little rubbery or a little uh, kind of chewy, chewy kind of texture. Chew it. He was saying Dylan is useless. I'm sorry, that kid's walking around in forest full of walker that he helped tie up using nothing but baseball equipment. I'm pretty sure that kid is not useless. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, he's not. He's not a Sam. Yeah, definitely not. A Sam. He's like the reverse. <laughs> Way better. Than- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all I. The irony of all this for me is that I'm vegan. We're here talking about eating humans, but I don't even eat animals. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> That Wait. is my exit. Okay, so we're going to laugh about you behind your back when we talk about girls. Not behind your back, but like. It's, an- it's another Rachel funny. Sorry, I'm used to it. All right. Which I really can't. Bye, guys. Okay, bye, thanks, bye. Rachel. By the way, we don't know this girl's name. I did not hear it in this episode. No, we didn't catch her name. Yeah. She said, it doesn't matter, or something like that, when they asked. The first time, right? On the radio? Yeah. This yeah. is James, yeah. by the way. I-, I can't. It's not safe for me, is what she said. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. I knew there was a reason. And, and now you know why. Right. Yeah. Do you know She's why? with Girl Kobe. Yeah. She, she, she was, was with, with yeah. I yeah. love that she, she was with like Girl Kobe. Kobe. <laughs> 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 which by the way with mo collins calls her ms colby i'm sure she ms. calls she calls uh uh colby holm and uh like mr mr colby, colby. Yeah. yeah which mr. i think is colby, yeah. way more dignified than- <laughs> yeah, yeah girl colby guy colby, girl colby. <laughs> I, w- I was shouting it as they were riding over the edge i'm like girl colby, girl colby. <laughs> <laughs> I, by the way i heard you in my head it's true yeah, probably yeah it's so true <laughs> <laughs> going down the ridge of like oh, yeah, it's girl colby ah oh, shit she got me again. <laughs> now I got you saying it. <laughs> oh, which by the way, I in I blazy saying this too. Like everybody called, <laughs> which just everybody calls everybody calls Colby Holman um, Uncle Colby because of that video um, he posted yeah. of his niece, oh, saying, like pointing at the screen when he did yeah. the Instagram takeover. That's like the one bit of content that he showed until like it failed out on him and he couldn't post any more things. Yeah, yeah like it showed a, a video of, of his niece watching him on the screen, and she goes, Uncle Colby. She's like pointing out the screen, but like Blazy saying, "Yeah, just call him Uncle Colby and Aunt Colby." Yeah, mm-hmm. Uncle Colby, Aunt Colby. Yeah, too many syllables. Too many syllables. See what he said. Obviously. <laughs> 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 that was the first episode I got in on. Yeah, yeah, and oh, uh, maybe no. I think you got. I think you were earlier, and weren't you? Maybe I don't know. Maybe the one before that. Maybe the one before that. But it was, it was towards the end of the of the season. This is when they were just coming on. Girl Colby, boy, boy Colby. But like now, it's like now that they're on the show, I'm like, you know, am I gonna say the same thing? Am I gonna say it the same way? Call him Wes and Jenny, or Derek. If that's where you want to go. Or Derek. Yeah, exactly. Oh God, I want that to happen so badly. <laughs> like this, after all these years or whatever, have a long time. <laughs> like listen i have a confession to make i'm gonna lose my goddamn <laughs> mind if that happens i'm like wait what wait what <laughs> my, my name's really Derek. <laughs> yeah i'm Wes's i never understood the point of like i'm a fraud um i all identities because i kind of wanted the same thing in laura like why are you giving everybody fake names it's not like anybody can look you up in a database or anything you know <laughs> yeah yeah like a predator database or something <laughs> what was the reason behind that too like trying to be somebody I else mean, it, it's harder for people i guess if you feel like if you don't give them your real name that they don't really know you you know and she didn't want to be close to anybody so it was better for her to say oh i'm, I'm this is really this is my name and then every time somebody was like hey know me you could be like shit they don't fucking know me it's not even my name you know a right. way to keep yourself at arm's distance or like to disassociate too like with so this thing oh i was thinking of maybe her disassociating with herself or like not yeah. identifying with that person right now that i'm thinking about like pandemic times and we're still in them like the reason why she felt so guilty 
was because she knew her daughter was sick. She didn't tell anybody. And that was the reason why they fell. And I keep seeing instances, like every now and again, every now and again, I see like instances of people saying, don't tell your kid is sick. Don't tell anybody your kid is sick so the school doesn't get shut down. That's the protocol. Yeah. And I'm like thinking to myself, oh my God, a bunch of Naomi, a bunch of Naomi Laura June's in the making, like the kind of thing that gets more people hurt. So I don't know. That's that. And so like, why wouldn't you change your name or why wouldn't you want to disassociate with possibly hurting other kids? Yeah. And then I guess John is the reason she, she could be herself again. Yeah, exactly. Like to unite that part of herself and not be like, look, nobody can blame you. Right. Whatever you did, you know, you thought yeah. it was the right decision at the time. Also, you know, the, the thing with the names, um, like June, like she's this person. That's who she really is. She doesn't want to be that. She wants to be someone else. So if she says my name is Naomi or Laura, um, she can act like Naomi and Laura. She doesn't have to connect because June would connect with a person. And, mm, which goes to something that she said with uh, uh, Althea when they started venturing off in the second half of Fear the Walking Dead season four. Do you remember when they go off on their own? She was like, I don't really kind of know who I am because yeah. I presented one version of myself to John, one more version of myself to Alicia, who is whom I really. It's the story of a nobleman, or literally a nobleman, who prefers to see the world the way... Not as it is, but as it could be. And that's okay. literally the story of mm -hmm. fear. Like mm -hmm. you're talking about people who, you know, this may be the world as it is, but we can, we, we want to see things the way it could be. Mm -hmm. and so, or like bring about the world the way it could be, could be like, we can be kind to each other. We can help each other. We can do one small thing, kind thing to somebody yeah. and, and just make the world better. <laughs> Of, I, th I think I brought this idea up, but the idea of tikkun olam, which is like to fix, to heal the universe. Oh, yeah. You just yeah. do a little, one little thing and it just yeah. adds to the universe. I love those little nuggets that they put in there, you know, something so, like, you know, it's, yeah, directly parallel to the storyline that we're seeing right now. Yeah. I love that. They, like, that's that's attention to detail that I really, that I love. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, when we get to Traveling Wilburys, I'm going to recite the lines and I'll be like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> but yeah. I, I needed to bring that I was up because still laughing. this is like right at, this is like at the top. And like, and what is she doing when she's listening to this audiobook? She's like taking, you know, the whole idea. What is she doing? She was with those solar panels. Yeah, those are solar panels. Okay. All right, like stuffing in the back of the truck. <laughs> you know, so it's the idea of like stuffing these solar panels into this truck with all this stuff, mm -hmm. and all this stuff represents the way the world could be. Like, what mm -hmm. are we packing in this truck? What we want to see in the world? Like, yeah. well, like they don't, they're not ready for it. It's not ready for them yet. But she says it's like you know, from when we find a place. Place. So she's thinking in terms of like, you know, we'll get there. She's like, she's like creating, you know, what is it called? Uh, building a nest, right? Like, like when you, you, when you and your husband got together, you had ideas of what kind of furniture you'd get, like as you, when you moved together, right? Eventually. Like, <laughs> I, I, your get, shitty furniture. I get what you're seeing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hun, no, you, we just had to go with what was available, but I, but I, but I, I acknowledge the, time, the point. Yeah. At the time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Cause after a while you kind of want to build a nest, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're still working on that. <laughs> It's <laughs> always a work in progress. Yeah. Believe you me. I don't know why people hate on this shit so much sometimes though. Like, and it could all, and it did, but it could all come tumbling down. But, you know, this is what you're supposed to do. I actually saw a quote from Don Quixote last night when I was taking out some that I thought really fit. The first one, um, you actually said a part of it when you were talking in the clip. When life itself seems lunatic, who knows where madness lies? Perhaps to be too practical may be madness. To surrender dreams, this may be madness maddest of all is to see life how it is and not how it should be yes oh yes yes which also goes back to what i said about beauty like or technically what luke said about beauty and art and culture it's like it's you know okay so you got survival down that's definitely necessary but like then what keeps it going you know art beauty science culture stories it kind of touched in season four because he was like a kid we need to find this kid another book because they have to have something outside of just survival when they were looking for um, they had the book and they were opening up to figure out where they were going to go and he's like we have to have something else it can't just be about survival and yeah. they find they find the library and all those books and then all those those um right. gar gardening or in the 
charts and stuff. Yeah. The other quote is, there is no book so bad that there is nothing good in it. And what does that make me think of? Madison. No one's gone until they're gone. Precisely. That's fucking, yeah. that's amazing. But it, but also, which this is a very high concept that I, I think is very necessary for these, these kind of days. Like, in a world where everybody takes the one bad thing and says, oh, you're all bad, you know? And I mean, not to not to not to get political, which seems to be like the thing that we, the recurring gag in our in our recaps. The one thing that really bugs me about most people when we t- when they talk about politics, it's like a zero sum game. You look at a politician, let's say, and it's and look, they only hurt their case when they say fear mongery. And this is all politicians, it feels like, but all politicians do this thing where you know you do you kind of scare act your way into politics, and you say the other side is worse than the other, and and what ends up happening is you turn your constituents into the same monsters where like you see one in you see one bad flaw from the other side and that person is a horrible human being which but then also blinds you to that person's flaws the the, the side that you're on and so what i in going back to the show it's kind of like it's very easy to kind of look at a villain or look at a, a character that is supposed to be representative of, of the villain and say oh, i don't like that guy what a dickhead but then the more you take a look at it and it's kind of like what we said about books even even the worst books have value you know look so you look at the villain you take the sum total of that person it's like yes maybe maybe they're not such a great person or maybe they are trying to threaten the people that we're following but nobody is so bad to not see what they're trying to do like in a sense there's evil is only uh, evil think, in, in as much as good people stop being good right Negan and Dwight are good examples of that because when we first see them they're horrible people we hate them they do a terrible thing but later on we kind of realize that they have good in them it just needed a way to be brought out or circumstances to be brought out right the conditions by which they could find a way to be that person that they actually wanted to be but in a way that works for everybody or for them even the uh, idealized they self didn't know, they didn't know how to be that person before and now they have a mean to be that person exactly exactly and that's what fear that's what fear the walking dead season five essentially is trying to do like you see these characters struggle and find a deeper truth in themselves you know the, the helping people was you know a delusional smoke screen scr- smoke screen and then really it's just i need purpose and maybe this is the way to get it you know so i like that i really like that and that's why that's why i chose the quote i'm like no this has got to be the quote because there were so many in this one so many that i could have chosen for this episode seriously take your pick one of the things I love about the book is the Easter egg, the uh, uh, little the book hints, quotes, the like like the yearling in season four, and um, I saw I noticed it in um, one hundred and one, Winesburg, Ohio. Just the little things, and if, if you're a fan and you take the time to deep dive into those, you will get such uh, a deeper understanding of what they're doing. It's yeah. just, I love that stuff. I love the Easter egg and the details. Yeah, definitely. Although I'll say one thing, the only thing that I'll say is that, and I fear that season four and season five in some ways became uh, um depended on those easter eggs hoping that the audience would get it and that it would further f- help them figure out what the season's about in some instances like the don quixote thing like like uh tale of two cities right all these different things that you could easily attribute to just oh enhancing the story but in some ways it kind of like it was it was almost like uh the undergirding of the structuring of the of the season and which is a mistake because i mean it's not a mistake it's 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 a it's like reaching it's like you're trying not to talk down to your audience right but like at the same time sometimes you have to spell some some things out <laughs> you know sometimes in order for a show to be enjoyable kind of it's kind of like pop music why do people like pop music because it keeps it to the you know it keeps it simple and some people look that's what they like and most people most people is that's what they like you know and so that which is why it works why it's why you know it's uncomplicated it's beautiful still and you know it works add a little frill to it so and that's why sometimes people will say like season four season five just didn't do it for them you know in some ways but i digress oh this is the bonus content that i bye <laughs> from that episode my husband does that too Fuck you. <laughs> I, I do it all the time now <laughs> that damn t-mobile commercial we just bye. kept recording <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why that commercial makes me laugh so hard the big fluffy things and they're all saying hi and goodbye in the phone and i it just made it cracks me up so bad and i don't know why I can't stop laughing when that comes your husband on. does it. <laughs> no, I do it. I, mean, I do it, and then he makes fun of me. <laughs> I'll say goodbye, no matter if I'm like, bye. He's like, bye. Me. <laughs> I don't know how you haven't noticed I've, I've been doing it the last few uh, 
<laughs> you, uh, I just figured you were making fun of me. <laughs> no, I do. I do it to Evelyn all the time. Oh like, my gosh, she's going out swimming. I go, Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> or, or it's the what's the the eHarmony commercial? Is it eHarmony or is it Match? The girl, the girl at the end of the, she's like, I'm just, I don't play games, and come find me. <laughs> oh, you're talking <laughs> about um. Uh, uh, Rebel Wilson? No, 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 no. no. Oh, no. It's, it's a girl on a dating website. I think it's Match.com. No, no, it's like, it's somebody who's like on the site. It's yeah. not a famous person. Oh, Is it Match? Come find me. Oh, yeah. Yes, She's like, yes. come find me. Evelyn, Evelyn hates, <laughs> hates, hates her. Hates so her with the passion. We make like, fun of her so bad. And her hatred is making me go like, okay, I think it's <laughs> hilarious, but your burning hatred makes me not think so. <laughs> like... <laughs> I thought it was funny, but now you're taking oh it way too gosh. seriously. That bitch. That is a bitch. <laughs> That's a golden, golden, golden bitch. bitch. I'm like, holy shit. Right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't disagree. No. <laughs> but yeah, no, we make fun of her pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> I think that commercial uh, affected everyone who saw it because uh, I just, so many people, bye. After, bye. After Come that find me. And, you know, okay, I harmony. Remember, <laughs> yeah, I remember someone. I, I I think I said like bye to someone who's like, hey, how do you know that? I'm like, wait, what? Like, well, you're Brazilian. How do you know that? I'm like, well, I you know I I have a computer. I can watch American channels and see their commercials in 2019. Right, exactly. It's 2019, <laughs> bro. 2019. I download torrents, bitch. <laughs> like, exactly. You think you think I don't get my my Walking Dead episodes without commercials? Uh uh-uh, uh, exactly. I'm a real. Exactly. I watch it live on my computer <laughs> i think they're trying to hammer down the point that like this is how we do things and if we do keep doing things the right way you know results will happen and it's taken a long time for them to get to this point you know think about how things started out at the beginning of the season and AKA look what they are now like, dave goes on a like, rant on the radio going is anybody out there is anybody out there <laughs> it's another day here in, <laughs> at the denim factory <laughs> at the middle right you know like like i i half expected somebody to like go, good morning <laughs> like fucking around or Sarah. It's just that boring and nobody's answering yeah so yeah so like and then now they're actually helping people and the group has grown like ex- just kind of pave the path this is where we're at you know this is who we are how we got here and it's kind of like building an audience too I was thinking about like how you know, how lo- how far we've come okay as, as a podcast like we we started out barely knowing how to grow an audience you, you had people like by the way I mean credit to Johnny Fives Alive who's who just popped onto um Instagram like you have like these people who are are like monitoring hashtags right twd fear to twd etc and then they pop on they like your posts and then you pop onto theirs and you're like damn that's a good edit you know and then you kind of look for each other you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and it i mean you could be okay let me let me put it this way you can be like Ginny, and you can like do like follow for follow follow for follow (laughs) you know what i'm talking about right yeah yeah Yeah. yep (laughs) i I, I like your music (laughs) you want to follow me back like you could be like Ginny, or you could be like this group like making connections you know doing the right thing the right way following people because you want to follow them not because you want them to follow you back like i won't i'm not going to follow somebody who posts i mean no offense to anybody because just i would follow you if from my personal account if you had just pictures of cats and alcohol right like just <laughs> me drinking drinks drinks and not your cat drinking drinks that's abuse no, no. but like you know you having the cat and put it on the shoulder and you're burping the cat <laughs> like that's fine i'll follow you from my personal but i'm not going to follow you from my Squawk and Dead account. I'm just, that's not, I don't need that. I, yeah. need to be making, can I, I need to follow people that I can actually genuinely have interactions with. You right. know, I see like a, like art, I'll kind of comment on it. Or if I see like, like you're even just like a fan picture, like I can just comment on that picture and we can talk about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's, and it's not out of malice. It's more like, you know, I just want to make genuine connections. So, and you see that like we started out, we barely had 200 followers, like by the time Walker Stalker yeah. came out. And now like we're getting really close to a thousand. Um, and I've seen accounts hit a thousand in less than a month. Holy yep. crap. Right? Just because yep. of this follow for follow nonsense. Oh. Now that, that doesn't impress me. That really doesn't impress me. How many likes do you get in return? Oh, you're getting 300 <laughs> likes? But do anybody really care? Right. I don't think so. Because a lot of the comments, I don't like the hearts and the thing, you're not really engaging with anybody. <laughs> you know, and so it, it really kind of hit home for me when I 
reinforce all that because when, when you see this diametrically different way of operating these two groups, it's, it does kind of hit home like how like you have this bedrock group who many times, you know, Morgan's like, does anybody want out? If it's, it's totally okay if you want to go with her. And no, not oh. one of these beaten down, you know, back against the wall people are like going to Ginny. They're like staying mm-hmm. with the group because they know, you know, and it's kind of like, it's kind of like us a little bit. I mean, look, we may eventually get boring and say, I hate Carol. <laughs> they, uh, I hate Daryl and Carol, the idea of them being together. Stop. And then you'll run away. Stop. <laughs> Fuck it all. You know, I, I think you know it. I don't mean that. So, right. but, I, mean, you know, I mean, I still think it. Fuck this podcast. <laughs> everybody's opinions are valid and right. yes, you know, respected. Exactly. You know, it's not about quantity. It's about quantity quality you know i value everybody that i follow and who follows back and you know and i do like i see these things and like you said you know you like you comment you you know you support you that's how you support people on on social media that's how you network is by making those comments and connections with people who's talking i see your face no i just see <laughs> <laughs> they're commenting on the cat thing <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah the cat. The cat. why is your cat drinking cat. i don't know <laughs> <laughs> too much milk <laughs> <laughs> don't I mean, do that either cats are lactose and tolerant <laughs> if you do have a personal i don't want you to take a picture from the internet but if you do have a personal picture of you burping a cat i want to know and i will post <laughs> it to my feed that's how like badly I, i'm very interested in seeing that but again you have to be the one burping it so I right. anyway, I never sorry. Received it. But yeah it goes back to it. the point of like very yeah upset. it's just making solid connections and, and yeah. they're saying like you know oh we'll see you at walker stock i'm like yes yes yay and yes that's that's it that's what it's about man yep we have to go back <laughs> <laughs> we have to go back to camp merrimack we have to go back Kate. we have to go back we have to go I back lost money. <laughs> This is actually a really important question because we all deal with this, like to a degree, this kind of behavior. Like, yeah. have you have you found yourself doing that? I mean, I do it because I like the content sometimes, even if they do the follow for follow thing. Uh, but, I, you know, with my fan account, I get a lot of even you know, on comments on posts like, "Hey, nice content, follow for follow." I don't even answer, and the oh. DMs, I just delete them because no, I, I'm not gonna do follow. I'm I'm gonna check the, com- the account or the comments first. though too. Or the comments, right? No, I don't delete the comments. I just ignore them. But you know, I do go to the to the page first, and I see like, okay, you know, that's a good content. If, even if they unfollow me, if I like the content, I'm gonna follow. And that's the but... worst, right? Like they'll do that, and then they'll unfollow you, and you're still following them. And, and yeah, it's fine, ostensibly, but like, what a shitbag move, right? And I I did start following a lot of people, not for that, but and then I realized, like, you know what? I'm gonna actually unfollow a lot of people and just follow. Um, accounts that have to do with you know the content the the fan content content, yeah the fan content so i won't get flooded with posts i think all of us have have had this experience and especially you and me nisa because of this one person who shall not be named forever uh no i'm kidding i'll I'll bring it up it's sorgon 9 i used to get tagged a lot by people on certain posts yeah it's it's one thing and i'll like them but i see thing i automatically have it so it doesn't it doesn't show on my profile which by the way a lot of celebrities do not do yeah a lot of celebrities will leave that option open so that it shows in their in their profile and that's not good by the way some of those things but the thing that i hate the most and this is is and it's it's really fucking rude because i'm not like associated with amc or the walking dead or anything like that but i have an audience that needs to grow right like i just want people to get eyeballs on my shit but like occasionally i'll get like somebody who will tag me in a post and Mm -hmm. these are the same people who won't even like our posts do you know what i mean and so that's just so fucking rude to me and like i just you don't if you want me to to promote your shit but you don't take the time to interact with me i have two or three of those people on instagram and they're nice and i deal with them but they're like tagging me and shit all the time like i'm supposed to go like and comment on their shit but they never and i'm sorry i've cut so much they sorry, never it's my fault. ever come to my page and <laughs> <laughs> they never come in life or interact with me in any way. Yeah, I have this one person on my my fan account that is always it's a cosplayer that is always tagging me on. I think it's, it's a her. It's a she she cosplays as a male character, but anyway, and she doesn't follow me or even. I, I don't think I ever saw her liking any of my posts, but she's always tagging me on hers. Anything I, to do with the show at all? I said in my case, it is the show. She's always tagging me in her edits and stuff. And you know, like I don't come and comment on it but i have never seen her like or comment on anything in my uh, my feed here's the worst part about the, the, the instance that i'm talking about is that it's a it's a i'm trying not to give too much away this is a like an otherwise an erstwhile comedian 
person, like a young lady, um, who will tag me in her like little skits, but it, which ostensibly ha may have something to do with like the Walking Dead universe, but really not. It was like a kind of a cross pandemic thing where like, oh, what if Lucille was in the show? Like whatever. The whole point being is like, there's a tenuous connection, but like, meanwhile, you know, you're tagging me in this post, you're tagging me like, and so in the hopes that it'll appear in my profile or something like that. And yeah, like, like there's almost zero connection to the show. You know, you're just, you're just a comedian who's trying to, you know, get the hustle. Yeah. But like, yeah, at least if the cosplayer, let's say the cosplayer or the edit has something to do with the show and you tag me and I'd be like, hey, I like that. I may even share that. But yeah. that is just, just that, and, and, and the worst is when they're not bad people, you know, like the worst. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you want to like, like, what the fuck, dude? And actually do something about it, like delete them or block them or whatever. But yeah, and now it's like, they're actually not that bad people. It's just they're young or stupid or they got this ignorance thing, you know, that little block that they just yeah. don't see what they're doing is kind of like, ah, eh, passe, you know, like, or not really nice. This cosplayer that always tags me, it, you know, cosplays a character of the show, so it has to do with the fandom. Okay. And I have, I have put it on my stories, you know, her cosplay, because it's a really good cosplay. And, in, no, she never liked any of my content. She never, she doesn't follow me. But, you know, it is actually good content, so right. I am gonna share it. And and then she's like, oh, thank you. And I'm like, oh, you know, you're welcome. Good content, by the you, way. You you could thank me by following me. Yeah, no, I, I don't, I really, I don't really care. But I'm also not gonna follow that person because you know, I'm, uh, like I, I just follow the actors, directors, you know, in and some other fan accounts. And this is the thing, you don't, you don't have to follow them. I mean, if they're the ones that. So the thing is that that's what gets me and this is about your situation is that like dude okay you're gonna tag me in a post but not even follow me like they're the one who's they're the ones who are trying to get your attention but like you're not even doing mm -hmm. the bare minimum of following the account you're tagging that exactly. is that's even way more rude social media is all about reciprocity if you're not being reciprocal then you're not holding up your end of social media right well i i see it more like i mean yes that, it, it, that's the unfortunate reality in some respects like because i think marriages are kind of like harmony it's not necessarily you know reciprocity it's more like you know i'll do this but you'll do that and that kind of thing so sometimes relationships are unequal right sometimes you follow stars they don't respond back right right that makes sense i mean time and bandwidth and and the Dun the dunbar number which you should all look up for your mental health the dunbar number are is the the maximum number of relationships you can possibly have and maintain properly um look that up we actually do talk about it. we have talked about about it on the show but anyway but the whole point is that like I see social media as a means of being social. If you're not yeah. being social, then you're either doing it wrong or, you know, you're doing, you're putting something out there to be discussed. That's, that's the whole point. That was supposed to be the whole point. It's not just about advertising. I'm giving you something that can open up a discussion about that something. You know, it's easy because we're a podcast, you know, something to engage with. You know, so when we go out and engage with others, that stuff actually ends up being on the show or that stuff ends up being something we end up talking about. So, and we'll talk about it in the comments, but like, we'll also talk about it. Yeah, I just spoke to this and this person that they say this. And I thought that was really interesting. So I'll bring it on the show, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's a it's a thing that starts conversation. Hopefully, ideally, because I'm an idealist. But it's like <laughs> you said, Sharon. D, it is. It does end up being a system of reciprocity, like meaning or a reciprocal nature of you know, which I think I think is pragmatic. But pragmatic doesn't always seem right. But uh, whatever. Anyway, it ends up being that way. Let's go to the obvious question of Do you think Morgan will die? No, of course not. No, not convinced. I wa I saw him roll under the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you said that. By the way, I love so, that you, so, you're so quick to say right. that. Too. <laughs> So the second time I, oh, so I watched it the first time by myself. And then the second time I watched with my husband, right. And, and we're getting to the end and he's like, oh man, oh man, oh man. And I go, wait, 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 watch, 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 watch. And he's staring so intently. Right. And he's like, and then, and then the screen goes black. And he goes, what, what happened? I said, you didn't see it. I didn't no. see it. Wait, you no, saw something. You, I said, he rolled under the dumpster. <laughs> he goes, oh, fuck Shut the fuck you. Up. <laughs> he's such an asshole. <laughs> I laughed so hard. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, of course man. he's not dead. He's Morgan. He doesn't die. I can tell you what evidence I have that he, may, that he may not be dead. You ready for this? Yeah. Yeah. Convince me more. <laughs> Did you see? So you so remember how last week I pointed out the tree in the teaser, the tree in the chapel, the tree um, that Alicia and Wes Alicia and, painted. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, well, okay. So it's we got to see that it was them both. Mm -hmm. All we saw was the tree. We didn't know who did it. So it was Alicia. Mm -hmm. It was a joint.
side project. Did you see what was written above the tree? I did not. I could not make out any words on that image. I had to go image. full screen on that. Yeah, I couldn't okay. see anything. Uh, no one's gone until they're gone. Ah. So Morgan is backing away from Jenny to the chapel mm -hmm. just underneath the archway where they drew the painting. Mm -hmm. And what does it say? No one's gone, no one's until, they're gone. until they're gone. What did Madison say to the kids? Same no one's thing. gone until they're gone. Yep. That was my saving grace. Having a backup underneath the chapel archway as kind of like, wait, does that mean what I think it means? Right? Like, does that yeah. mean, oh, for sure he's not dead or not dying? Yeah. And then uh, all, the, all the other theories as a result, like, okay, oh, bro, he's getting going to get taken away by the helicopter that Rick's on, <laughs> or, like, which I really genuinely thought would be a thing. I never thought he was going to die. I, I mean, I wasn't in the crazy, oh, the helicopter was going to pick him up or anything, but I figured somebody would show up and, and say, <laughs> oh, it's going to be shared. Oh, it's going to be Madison. Yeah, that's me. That's me all over the place. Like, I have to operate within what I'm given, right? So, like, I have to also see that through. Like, what would it look like? What would that look like for Morgan to, to die in that instance? And, like, what, where could the story go as a result? Because, I mean, there is something po poetic about, like, like we were talking about when we were talking about, um, meet John Doe. I like that idea because, okay, well, this person, this person comes into your life, shakes things up, you know, gets you guys together, keeps you hoping, keeps you going, keeps you on the path, and then what happens when you take that person off the path you know like how what happens when that person's removed from your life do you remember do you become something else as a result of that he's still removed from their life he's just not dead right apparently he's uh judging by the trailers he's not around anybody so being me and assuming that it'd be somewhat like madison except maybe there is some sort of trail right there's not dead so i couldn't believe i didn't want to believe he was dead either which is why i said oh madison the helicopter rick etc <laughs> crm which showed up in this season which so makes sense he thrived Right, Heath coming down with uh, <laughs> with Jadis, the, the, the strike force. But like, why I said that was because okay, you can make it seem like he died, maybe somewhat like the way Madison died, right? Or didn't die, right? Right, everybody, right? And then take him away from the show, where you know you can be upset that he left, but also relieved that maybe he's going somewhere else, you know. And so it's not a death; it's like a Rick thing, you know. Like they think he's dead, so they operate on the premise that he's dead, which they're they're still doing now but he's still on the show um and then how do these characters shape out right yeah. so that's what i was thinking like how do you cleverly do that i never thought morgan was gonna die but there was you know a part of my mind that was what if what if okay how am i gonna keep him alive i did think okay the helicopter uh i i started creating this crazy theory uh you know like going as far as the you know the the guys from Vato. they're they're gonna appear in fear and they're gonna save morgan like you know you 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 go to this crazy land that is pretty to, crazy just to save yeah just to save morgan no he's alive he's gonna stay alive he's gonna be saved somehow he's not dying yeah but he's alive know. in spite of himself <laughs> <laughs> yeah like he's not dying you're not killing him okay no um, no i'm gonna hit you with a newspaper <laughs> run on your snout <laughs> <laughs> like an but, abusive um, dog owner. Okay, so that that leaves us here with our Fear the Walking Dead coverage, our squawk, best Squawking Dead clips of Fear the Walking Dead Season 5. Thank you very much. And if you like what you heard, uh, definitely try to rate us on ratethispodcast.com slash Squawking Dead. Five stars and an eggplant is all we need. But, you know, if you'd like to say more, please do. ko-fi.com slash Squawking Dead. Follow us there, at least. And if you do want to support us, if you find it in your heart, $3 gets you 30 days of access. If you subscribe to a coffee a month, the party keeps on rolling and you keep on getting content. More than anything else, thank you for watching always leave a like and share and follow and then also leave us a comment let us know where, where what how screwed up we are for wanting to kill kids and eat animals <laughs> we always appreciate that by the way if you do give us a coffee you will get access to all of these clips uh in a special youtube playlist that we have just for ex just for backers for now eventually we're going to be releasing these, them as one-offs here and there throughout the year something like that but you're not going to get them all in one place the way um coffee backers do so i appreciate it uh, i appreciate you thank you for helping us reach 100 episodes uh stay tuned for our fifth and final part of this retrospective episode 100 where we cover our coverage our best clips of our coverage of the walking dead season 10 so i'll see you in the next one and thank you sharon d aka blazy gardener everywhere and nisa thank wtf you. nisa on social media thank you so much take care y'all and we'll see you very shortly bye bye <laughs> <laughs>